I took a huge swig of water and ruined my lipstick seconds before I was about to go live. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Calyx. I'm Becca Scott. And tonight, I'm going to terrify you all. We have three incredible guests and they are investigators that are here to solve a particular case, a case that is known as the Crimson Letters. We are playing Call of Cthulhu, an incredible role-playing game from Chaosium, and they are also sponsoring this video, so huge, huge thanks to them. This is actually straight out of the Keeper rulebook. So tonight, we're gonna be doing a giveaway for our Twitch chat. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, we love you. I just don't know how to work that many buttons. Uh, so pop in the Twitch if you wanna be involved in the giveaway. We're giving away four PDFs of the Call of Cthulhu starter kit and one PDF of the Keeper rule book. Now, these core rules give players and keepers alike the full Call of Cthulhu experience, and the starter set has a really, really easy pared-down version along with some starter scenarios. I actually used one of them on a previous stream, and it was excellent. It's a great way to get into the game without diving into a whole big old tome if you don't feel ready to bite into that or if you do then you should stick around to the end of the stream because that's when we're giving away a keeper rule book pdf and it is it's a lot of book oh yeah Okay, um, let's see. It includes a full chapter on tomes of eldritch lore that you can use as scenario seeds. Ah, yes, yes. That's in the Keeper's book. And for players to study and learn spells from, I know I've definitely used it for games that I am a player in. And I think, ooh, yo, what am I going to do? I need to, like, call upon a book of lore. <laughs> what, what a... What kind of player gets a keeper's tome and does that? This one. This one does. Um, and it also has a whole index of monster and alien gods, a bestiary of mythos entities from the lowly Migo to the epic gods like Azathoth, who uh, may have come up in our last scenario, BT dubs. Anyway, um, that bestiary also includes some lovely art. And I... Uh, keep gobbling it up. I love this Keeper rule book. So that's why I wanted to run something from it tonight. It has two full scenarios in it with ready to play investigators to get you right into the action. Without further ado, I want to bring in three incredible humans uh, that happen to be female folks that are here to play a game with me tonight. I, I'm so, so, so pumped to have all three of them here. Uh, let's start with... Uh, Mm, tonight, she's playing Celeste Eau Claire. She's not only a streamer, but an incredible actress and just a, a joy to be around, always enthusiastic and always coming up with new ideas. Josephine McAdam, hello. Bonjour. Hello. Ooh, you're already Celeste and I love it. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? Nervous because I'm about to run a scenario and I don't want to mess it up. Uh, you're gonna I love it very so much. I'm so excited. I'm excited to have you. I'm excited for Celeste to do what she does best. She is a showgirl, <laughs> is she not? Yes, a showgirl from Paris who is just in town visiting, having a little fun in Arkham, and uh, we'll see what I can get up to while I'm here. I know you have just set every viewer's heart a Twitter because you did for me. Uh, Celeste, when she does her French accent, uh, we're just going to have to stop the game so I can swoon. Um, and uh, we're going to shout out stuff at, at, later on, but you, you have a movie coming out this weekend? Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> I have a movie coming out tomorrow called The Mortuary Collection. It was nice of you to bring it up now. Um, I'm just so excited about it. It's coming oh, out on Shudder tomorrow. It's a horror anthology, and it's a lot of fun. All right. Well, everybody, go sign up for Shudder so that you can get the Mortuary Collection. Let's bring in our next player. She has just relocated, which breaks my heart, because who else will I have socially distanced backyard hangouts with? Uh, she is a streamer, a photographer, a creator of many things with many artsy talents. It's Kate Elliott, everyone. Oh, hello. Oh, I'm Good sorry. Good to see that's... you. I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> that must be Shyla Mustaire. I thought Wait, there you was talking English. to me, Shyla? Hey, what's up? You know my name's Shy, but I'm not really shy, so prepare for a lot of questions. <laughs> oh, God. And Shyla is a private investigator by trade, is that right? 
China Mystere, private investigator extraordinaire. Oh, wow. That, I will yeah, solve all your cases because I have to. So it's my job. Absolutely. I love it. <laughs> Thanks well, for having me back, guys. Good it's to see so you. Good to it have breaks you my heart that I'm so far away from you too, but at least I'm you get sorry to do this that I had to magical. bring up the negative. My heart it's is okay. broken. I mean, look how disgustingly boring this background is. Work needs to be done. It's okay. Hey, I know it's not going to stay that way. I know you have twinkle lights somewhere in a box. You know, twinkle lights, and at least I've got it on this cool angle. So at least Speaking it looks of twinkle lights. There is another player that we got to bring in here right now. Also just had a huge move uh, mm -hmm. cross country, in fact, and is an incredible role player, often on saving throw, doing all kinds of shenanigans. You've seen him on Geek and Sundry Stuff with me. In fact, all three of you have been on Geek and Sundry Stuff with me. And uh, just the consummate streamer indeed. It's Madame Havana Mahoney. Hello. It's funny because <laughs> yeah, I love you so much. It was funny because <laughs> when you were when you were introducing Kate, I was like, this could be me or Kate. Like, <laughs> I know. I was like, doing oh, a bad wait. job. I was like, I know I like Kate, but I never realized we were the same person. <laughs> <laughs> I never realized, but you know what? I'm Just happy. I'm happy to find to move it away true. from me. Listen, uh, Kate and I got together and said, woof. <laughs> we got to get, get the heck out of Dodge. We got to get away from Becca. She's a lot. <laughs> she, where we live. she shows up on the regular. She's just standing no. on my window with a boombox right now. Oh, my God. No, as the opposite. <laughs> as soon as it is clear to do so, if all of you are not in my new home, toasting <gasps> some wine glasses and we're watching, you know, our yes. top 10 movies from the early aughts, like I will literally <laughs> throw a fit. Okay. I will have a meltdown. So I'm taking you up on this. My Honestly, it's already booked. I have a yeah. guest room, and I yeah. think all of us could fit in. You know, in there. <laughs> Let's do it. I don't. Yeah. Okay. Dogs can have my room. Yeah. Uh, let's all dog pile on the dog bed. That's, pile all, pile. that's where I am. There anyway, would you all like to play a game of horror and intrigue? <sighs> no. I know the thing you're <laughs> planning to do today. <laughs> Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I think it's well, just been a I lot. Been, like, <laughs> and, uh, I, mean, I guess, sort of. Uh, I just wanted uh, to look at your faces. That's all this is about. We The game's just a... <laughs> all Wait, right. Can... Well, this evening, uh, we have three investigators. <laughs> uh, of course, you can see their names right there, but we need to find out a little bit more about them because they have all been called to Arkham, to Miskatonic University, to the heart of Lovecraft Country itself because there is a mystery to be solved. All you know is that you were called by Dean Fallon, and he has invited you to his office. Some of you know each other, I believe, and uh, you're about to find out in the year 1927 what has gone on that gone on at in you. All right, uh, so let's see. Let's start with Bernice James. Can you tell us a little bit about Bernice's background? What she's all about? Uh, yeah, Bernice, uh, her full name is Bernice James, but she goes by Bernie to her regulars and friends. Uh, she is a bartender by trade, but of course we are in the, uh, the throes of prohibition. So it's a bit of a different game right now than perhaps what we would uh, perceive it to be today. So not only does she need her bartending skills and her people skills, but also sort of a, uh, she has to be a, a fast talker and, and be able to get out of uh, trouble in tight situations. So uh, she's worked that into her repertoire and is, uh, is someone that people go to when they know they need uh, a confident, uh, a confident and confidant of a bartender. Uh, and so she's gotten a bit of a name for herself and, uh, and she's bit, um, She's a bit tomboyish. She dresses in high-waisted slacks and she collects suspenders. So you can always find her in one of... <laughs> I knew Kate would like that. <laughs> so you can always see her uh, her uh, touting one of her, one of her many uh, collectible suspenders. And uh, she's usually wearing a page boy hat that is kind of very poorly uh, damping down her super curly uh, brown 
messy, messy brown bob. So uh, sort of on the less classy end of, uh, of the 20s look, but, <laughs> you know, an ounce of effort was made. Perhaps. Oh yeah, those she showered. They don't put she on themselves last <laughs> week. So, <laughs> and and what about Shyla Mystere? Did you two know each other? <clears throat> At living in Arkham. And I all? mean, you're a detective. You probably have a drinking problem. <laughs> well, I know for sure. Sorry, this is Kate speaking. Should I be shy <laughs> now? Oh, I know. <laughs> well, Daddy has a big drinking problem. A big Joe, you know, he likes to slosh too. So, but Mother disappeared a long time ago. She was probably a raging alcoholic, and that's why she forgot about me, her daughter. Uh, but her name, I'm going to do this in a normal voice, is Shyla Mister. No, I'm not. Shyla Mister. <laughs> Private investigator extraordinaire. The name says Shyla, but I am not shy, so prepare for a lot of questions. I have a small, <laughs> petite figure, unusually attractive for someone who speaks like this. Um, I'm very fast talking, but not in the lying sense. I'm half brilliant and half bewildered. My father and my older brother are both private investigators, and this is absolutely my coat and my tie. Don't <laughs> ask questions about where I got this, because it's mine, and this oh. is what makes me a professional. <laughs> professional mode. Professional mode. How and old then, is and Shyla? Then, <laughs> How then, I'm, 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 I'm in my twenties. Oh. For sure. Um, and then this You're is gonna party die mode, so, so quickly. <laughs> you know, I've been pretty lucky This is so not far. a nice game. <laughs> but uh, I heard about this case, so uh, I decided this was this was my moment. I'm gonna absolutely, I'm gonna go crush it. I am very smart and very learned and educated from watching my brother. And, you know, I'm just gonna get a promotion to top spy. And then I'm gonna find my mother who disappeared. I think she's a secret spy. spy. And, and that's why she disappeared. So I'm here to help. I heard about this man, he lost some papers and I'm gonna find those papers because I can find things. My name's Shyla, hi. Okay, I'm so glad to be here. Oh my God, Kayla, oh, you so much. You <laughs> I can't I'm hurt very her. worried about whether or not Shyla We'll make it through the evening. We because, must protect uh, Shyla at all costs. <laughs> we will, no one will touch Shyla. I don't no know one. if I made it clear enough. I she am going like, to try to kill you this evening. She is, she is like when you were 14 and we're trying to pretend you were 21 on a role playing forum. Like that's the I'm, 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 I'm in my 20s. She's on she's on a detective, like private investigator role playing forum. And she's like, I'm 21. 100%. <laughs> Look at my pie. Here's a, a picture grown. of me. <laughs> it's come from a newspaper. <laughs> um, <laughs> the showgirl from Paris. Mm -hmm. Would you give us a little more information about what Celeste has been up to of late? What kind of woman she is? Uh, um, well, she's uh, currently staying at the Hypnos Hotel. She has a penthouse suite that she stays in. Uh, and uh, perhaps has several soirees out there, but she does also like to get a vent around town. Um, I'm sure that I've been by Bernie's uh, establishment where she works, yes? I mean, I'm if sure. you were there, she saw you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I'm sure that she would have seen Bernie as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that she's uh, given a little visit to the dean, Mr. Fallon. We oui? is that his name? Dean Bryce Fallon. Ah, uh, Bryce, Bryce, Bryce. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have a little uh, history, you might say, and so I, I've, he's asked me to repay a little favor, so. Here I am. As, <laughs> as Celeste leans upon Bryce's desk and runs her fingers through his hair, Bernice and Shyla, who were also invited to the dean's office, uh, are escorted in by his assistant. Uh, hello, welcome, welcome. Please come in and close the door. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, were we, were we interrupting something? Can you, you keep me serious? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No interruptions come in, ladies, please. 
uh, Ms. Eau Claire and I were just uh, becoming reacquainted. It, it's been many years since we've met. Uh, let's see. No, wait, tell us about the first time. <laughs> How did you, what's the first meeting? Uh, Ms. You know Eau Claire, I, I know you only by reputation. I, I've heard you're a new private investigator in town and I have called you for your particular expertise uh, or, well, discretion being new. Uh, and uh, hopefully you can help me in this. Celeste, I called you here, of course, because I heard you were in town and I know that you have a way with people. And Bernie, well, you just know everyone. I, I thought maybe the three of you might make it a, a team worthy of getting to the bottom of, of what's going on at my university. Yes. And I trust in your discretion. I well, think I'm, we can work together well, yes. Well, I definitely didn't advertise discretion, but I am <laughs> full on for this new friendship that's forming right now. Um, let's see. Dean Fallon is an attractive man, tall, wide-shouldered, dark-skinned, because in my version of 1927, uh, racism didn't exist in America. No, it, uh, it probably did, but uh, not in this sense, nope. because I want Bryce Fallon to be a beautiful, dark-skinned man. Uh, immaculately dressed, with uh, down to his cufflinks, which are made of gold, and his early 50s, but age has been very kind to him. He, he has a sort of calm authority, almost like a, a clergyman wishes he had. And uh, an incredible memory for names and faces. An intelligent hey. man. Hey, Bernie. Hmm? Yeah. You know about this. This guy, this guy's aged like a fine wine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling. I'm really excited to be on this case, and I fully expect that I will be able to deliver all the answers that you need. Thank you so much for trusting us with this mission. You are very handsome. Right. Uh, I think uh, what please, the, I think what the little lady is trying to say is she has a crush on you, sir. I, 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 That's neither here nor there. Uh, I, I, uh, you that's may strange, leave your right? number uh, after the case is solved, but I would really like to get down to the bottom of what's going on at this university. Although I am quite flattered. Thank you, Ms. Mustaire. I'm excited. I will use the money that I get from solving this case to buy a telephone. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you may have read about in the paper because Arkham is not a large town and that there was a death uh, in the faculty a Professor Charles Leader Professor Leader uh, well he died uh, the coroner has ruled it a heart attack a sudden heart attack although if you uh, were to see the body you would uh, understand that that it, it didn't seem natural, his death. Why don't you tell us what you saw? Well, uh, I'm only reporting back what I heard from um, one of our professors that also uh, does some coronary work for the medical school. And uh, he says it was a gruesome sight that the man's eyes were wide open and his, his body was contorted. Uh, you can learn more about that if, you, if you'd like to speak to him. Uh, his name is Dr. John Wheatcroft. John, wait a minute. Does anyone have a pen? Uh, yeah, I have a pen. Okay, can I have that, please? I mean, you can borrow it. <laughs> I would like to have it. You can borrow it. I can have it long time. You can Darling. borrow it, Shiloh. Okay, okay, so okay. you got to remember that name. What was it, Wheat Man? <laughs> Dr. I can't John take notes. Hey, no one will give me a pen. We're never gonna get through this game. <laughs> We're gonna have to take eight sessions. No, so, okay. Here. You told me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me get back to reality. This is a very serious situation. I understand that. So the man was contorted. Was he contorted like a forty clover or more like a pretzel? <laughs> he was like a man in a fetal position with his limbs in a sort of paralysis. You can uh, learn yes. more about that from Dr. John Wheatcroft. He's Wheatcroft. here at the university. Wheatcroft. Yes, you can find him at the medical school. Uh, it's, you'll see it right down uh, if you walk out the path of this administrative building. It's now. Well, oh, oh, I don't know that any of us are qualified to be medical examiners, so I, I'm not sure oh. why. I, 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 I,
I think we can learn from it. I've examined many, many, many bodies myself. (laughs) We should talk more. We have a lot to talk about, I feel like. I think we do, yes. Uh, Okay, so we contorted pretzel courts. You don't think it was a, a heart attack? I'm not sure. That's not uh, necessarily of importance to me. What is of importance oh. to me is a certain yes. set of documents. These documents were given by the estate of the late Joshua Hobb House four months ago to the university. They were given to us uh, for their assessment and to determine their significance. And we had a sort of handshake understanding that perhaps there'd be an eventual investiture of part of the collection of papers from this estate. And what, These what papers the, are from the Salem witch trials of 1690. Excuse me? Please keep this confidential, of course. This would be an incredible scandal for the university if this information were to come to light to the public, which is why I have called the three of you, you that are experts in your field and I yeah. know will operate with the we utmost cross. discretion. <laughs> And care in this matter. You were the only ones I could trust. Okay, so we. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. There is Salem documents with a professor who's a doctor. Why is it going to be a scandal if these Salem documents come out? Are they believing it? Is there something going on at this university we should know about? Because, you know, it's up to you to disclose to us if we're going to be in safety and, or danger. I see, uh, I understand your question. The problem is not the documents themselves. The problem is that the documents are missing. I may have left that part out and that's completely on me. Okay, Right. you might say that I'm being nosy, but I do want to know what's on those documents. Absolutely. Just because what if we find Salem documents and we're like, oh, these are the documents that they need and they're not, they're different documents. So what are we looking for exactly here? You That's a very look, great man, point. You Anything you find that. relating to the Salem witch trials, and specifically a juror of the last name Hobhouse. Uh, I, I, I can't remember. Oh, Joshua Hobhouse is the estate, the last of his line. And he uh, had these documents, and when it came to the next of Ken, they were the ones that brought them to the university for study and valuation. So I now, can confirm this is Hobcraft. Hobhouse. <laughs> He has two Bs. Two Bs. You should have specified that if you want us to solve this case. Okay. We're on it. Uh, Of course, it is now nearing October. Yes. uh, What is the date? Today is uh, the uh, October 3rd. Uh, he, He passed away on September the evening of September 23rd, or, or really the wee hours of September 24th, is when the body was found yeah. by his research assistant. <laughs> because, of course, the professor in question is the one who was entrusted to determine the significance of these documents. I, I believe professor, that's the information that I meant to impart to you. Are there are there any questions Eat-croft. or perhaps other information oh, that I could provide? Uh, Celeste, my dear, he takes her hand and kisses it. Can I trust you? Uh, <clears throat> I was clearing my throat. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, yes, of course you can trust us. Yes, we will find these documents and uh, bring them back with utmost haste, I'm sure. And I will keep this little Shyla uh, safe, like the little button that she is. Oh, it's a button. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Shyla. How huh. old are you, my dear? I'm twi- I'm twen- I'm in my twenties. <laughs> For sure, I'm like, look, look. Can you see? I'm wearing a tie. Only grown ups wear a tie. So, can you yes. describe Shyla's uh, uh, visage? Uh, she she is, her her shoes like ten sizes too big. <laughs> she's four foot three. <laughs> she's. Uh, I accidentally rolled really high on her appearance. Um, that was not my intention. So she's very attractive for a hobbit. Um, and uh, well, she's a she child kind of, and she's really cute. <laughs> like, she kind of looks like yeah, a yeah. really powerful, tiny female cop. Like, uh, like she could be the age she's saying, or she could be younger. You don't really know, but she's doing her best and you believe in her. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. You're going to have to roll for a <laughs> <laughs> 
leaving, but I don't want to do too much of that as I'm just trying to impart the scenario. I'm and, so but, sorry. Uh, Paul House. I got sorry. it. I've got the good notes. We're on it. Yes, oh. I, don't, I don't even need to write anything down with Shyla here. But you do uh, need to write down how to get kisses on hand from hand from gentlemen because that's uh, something I have not mastered yet. Pardon me if I was being impolite. I uh, will indeed kiss uh, Shyla's hand as well. Gets I think oh. I think Bernie's just gonna Bernie's gonna take her hand and put it down. <laughs> uh, Bernie, don't be left out, Bernie. It's okay. It's okay. I, 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 I've, I've, mm. Mm. Yes, Bernie, do not feel left out. Uh, now I will Bernie, take, I'll take Bernie's hand and kiss it lightly. <laughs> We're all just standing kissing. I'm feeling <laughs> for the no, first I'm time. I'm confused. I'm confused. <laughs> this is just like real life. Why did I come here? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, we got Weecroft. We got Sam Professor. The document Hot House in September 23rd. That's what we're working with. Okay. Can I, I, can you I know ask you? exactly what you're doing now. Now, Bernie, <laughs> of course, I know you work at uh, at Hibbs Roadhouse, and you may uh, know just about everyone in town. I thought you and Celeste, and, and of course, this uh, this new wild card in town. I have absolutely been to a bar. <laughs> <laughs> would know exactly what to do. Uh, of course, well, Hibbs Roadhouse is, is not a, a bar, my dear. It's it's a coffee shop and, well, a juice bar in the front. I make a mean kale shake. What, what is kale, kale in 1927? Uh, anyway, something please. I invented. <laughs> <laughs> I would love a report back. Anytime you have any small piece uh, of information, it would just put my mind at ease if I just knew a little bit more. So feel free to update me with anything that comes your way. Well, Shyla doesn't have a telephone yet. I do not. Uh, then perhaps if you, uh, call you all me, can share accommodation. You, to, you can't. Yes, you can stop my my room at the hotel if you need to use the phone. All right. So, well, wait, I do wait, have wait, other wait. meetings I need to attend to, but uh, let's see. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to know about Charles, uh, the man himself? I, I didn't know him well personally, but I, I do know. Well, I will I say it looks like Bernie had a question, uh, according to her body, body language of Bernie. My Bernie language. <laughs> Your Bernie language is sending me some messages that you have a question. I, I just am a little concerned because it seems like people are coming in contact with these documents and not living very long. And, and in my line of work, you know, it, I don't, I'm not normally presented with this sort of threat. So uh, I, I just want to make sure like we're getting all the information on about how dangerous this might be. And also uh, maybe, you know, at least half the payment up front. That's a really you, you're smart, but yes, we would like half up front sleeves. I said sleeves, but I meant please. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to roll for persuade if you're gonna want half of your payment up front. Mm. Uh, okay, about. can I can I fast talk this? Uh, yeah. sure. How would you fast talk it? I think just like sort of just like listing. Like, okay, here are my normal qualifications. I pour a drink. I hide all of the drinks when the cops come. You know, it's very cut and dry. But, you know, <laughs> if I'm going into this whole new line of business, all right, and you're making me go on all these branches, I, we have to decipher documents. Suddenly we're, we're what, we're mortu mortuary assistants. Some, you know, <laughs> suddenly, suddenly we're going on wild goose chases for professors that aren't alive anymore. And who knows what sort of haunts are going on around there. I'm just saying, you're asking a lot. <laughs> Can you please roll for fast talk? <laughs> I but you know, fast talk is kind of when you're pulling one over. I'll, I'll let you have it. I'll let you have it. You'll let me have it? <clears throat> I'll let you roll for fast talk. I rolled just play. under uh, 49. <laughs> so, and it's, it's 50 for me. So, I was thinking uh, I, I would offer each of you a hefty sum because these papers are worth quite a valuable sum, I imagine, uh, of two hundred fifty dollars each. And you can't go looking for them. Obviously, I don't want anything to seem out of place. And oh, I would so a private no detective and a bartender and a cabaret girl walking into a university—that's not going to draw any attention. 
You know, I, I think we can go undercover. I don't think anyone's going to notice us. Yeah, what, what would be your costume of choice? Like to suspend their disbelief for the purposes of a show that this is the correct team to be working on this case. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're uh, wanting to put us in a point like that, that you won't put yourself in, then you got to pay at least half up front. That is what a professional... He walks around his desk and he sits down. He pulls a checkbook out of a drawer and he starts writing three separate checks for one hundred and twenty-five dollars a piece right now. That's the most money I've ever seen. Big spending money because in nineteen twenties, uh, that's like th I don't know three grand each they gave you in today's dollars. Uh, so well done. Yes, I was not uh, expecting payment on top of this. I don't mean I'm... to insult you, Mon uh Whatever you prefer. Uh, Wait, what were you expecting? Wait a minute. There's a bit of a true exchange going on here. Don't think that I, just because I'm the talk the way I talk, that I'm not deducing what's going on in this private conversation. What's going on here with this private conversation? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you. If y'all could set out on solving this here mystery. <laughs> There's a big mystery in this room right now. I'm telling you that. <laughs> I simply owe the dean a favor that I am repaying. That is all. He rips up the check because he does not break eye contact with Celeste. Well, you know, in the future, Celeste, if someone hands you a check and you don't want it, I will take it. Just uh, putting that out there. Plenty where that came from. Uh, I can also provide the three of you this key to Leader's office, as well as a key to his cottage which is nearby the university if you need any arrangements to have any faculty members speak to you and they're giving you trouble just talk to me and i'll have my assistant make sure that they give you the time if they know it's good for them and well i suppose two people i, I know that he spoke to often were his research assistant um uh, what's her name a young uh, amelia court i believe uh, she, she's a student and she was assigned because she's well um, far above her years, I've heard. And there is another professor, Harlan Roach. Oh, yeah, Amelia Court and Harlan Roach. Mr. Roach, uh, well, Professor Roach is, is also here at the university, and I have, well, he is in fact the one that discovered that the papers were not amongst Leader's possessions after he passed. Hold on a second. I need to ask you a question because I've read a lot of crime novels. I mean, been on a lot of cases. So it <laughs> seems like Harlem Roach said the papers were missing, but he was the only person to say so. So perhaps we check, what was it? Harlem Roach's uh, personal possession for those papers. First and foremost. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't necessarily, I, I mean, I, I can't grant you the powers of a detective and I wouldn't want one of my faculty to think that I am mistrusting of them, but it, it, you do whatever you need to do. Uh, uh, I just, um, I, I can't necessarily give you permission to search the professor's- You know what? I've, I've learned that it's it's best not to ask for, for, for permission. So let's maybe, before we divulge any more of our tactics to you, Dean, and hold you liable in retrospect, we will take our checks and we will be on our merry way to do your dirty work. I hear what you're saying, Bernie, and yes, Mr. Dean, we're going to do exactly what you said and nothing else. Yeah, he shows you out the door and he blows a kiss to Celeste as he shuts his mahogany door behind you and, and says, au revoir, mon chéri. You know that guy? <laughs> <laughs> What's his deal? He's kind of a creep. Yes, you know, he's like all men, though, really. They uh, are easy to uh, figure out if you know what buttons to push. Very true, very true. All it's right. just uh, girls with the one with the buttons, but okay, I've got a lot to learn, I don't know, okay. Are you, are you talking about your glitteries? <laughs> I was just, you know, I'm just thinking hard, it's okay. <sighs> I know, oh my. Auntie office, the assistant's office outside of the dean's <laughs> office. She's futzing with the radio and she's slamming it over and over. Seems to only be able to get static. Amelia? Amelia? Oh, no, dear. Miss Poppins. <laughs> yes. 
and she goes back to turns around and starts filing and, and typing up. Uh, she, she seems to be taking handwritten notes and typing them on her typewriter. What's wrong with your radio? Uh, well, dear, I I can't figure it out. It 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 seems to be some uh, some sort of problem with the station, perhaps. It's been doing this off and on for, well, I want to say just about a week now. Well, hmm. I can take a quick look at it. Certainly. Uh, can I roll a mechanic check on it? Yeah, absolutely. Shyla, how many days has uh, this uh, Charles been dead now? No. I, to be honest, I have just as much information as you, um, but I do know that his body was in the shape of a fetus, not a pretzel. So... <laughs> That's uh, I would something. say 10 days because 10 days. Yeah, based on uh, the date Shyla wrote down and today's date is October 3rd. What oh, they do? Hold on one second. I do have a note here. One second. Where is it? I have it. Hold on. It's in my it's in my paper somewhere. You literally Se- wrote September 23rd. That's not when he died. <laughs> Okay, so I may have got mixed up on my notes. Okay, it is what it is. Hold on a sec. Today is October 3rd. No, no, that works. Thank you. Thank you, Shala. It's okay. good. It's good. Bernie had your mechanical repair role. Um, I, I failed, but, you know, gently I failed. I failed gently, as I do. But I'm still curious if, um, if even in the effort to open it up and fix it, if I find anything inside just from opening it up. Sure. Uh, you open up the radio, and it's a pretty big box. Uh, it it seems that everything is in working order. You can't see anything that would be wrong with this radio. Well, ma'am, I, I don't see anything that would be wrong with this radio. Well, you don't see anything that would be wrong with this radio? Oh, radio. Uh, I don't want to trouble you. I, I know that uh, I don't know exactly what you were visiting the dean about, but I, I was just told to help you with any resources you may need. Uh, he okay. said you may want to spot, uh, speak to uh, Dr. Wheatcroft or perhaps Amelia or perhaps Harlan Roach. You yeah. know, I would like personally, Bernie, do you mind if I interject here with my professional tie? I, I literally don't think I can stop you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. So, Mr. Amelia, Mrs. Miss, Le- Miss Lady Amelia, I see your radio's not working oh, here, but may I suggest that you uh, unplug it and plug it in again? And then why don't you set up a meeting with uh, Mr. Har- is it Harlem Roach? I would like to speak to a Mr. Harlem Roach. I believe he's the one that reported the documents missing. No, I believe he would be the most person we should talk to right now. Sure. Uh, my name is is Estelle, dear. Uh, I, I, Where can I, I get Amelia from? Uh, there, there, there is a student named Amelia. Uh, but yes, Mr. Roach's office, it's just if you were to step out, he's actually in the histories department. Go outside and to the right, you'll see the histories. Outside to the right. Okay, wonderful. That's where we find that. And did you try unplugging and plugging in your radio again? Ah, yes. Oh, I'll Give try me. that. And as she's bustling around. She's she's kind of a, a bustly lady, you know. She's a uh, and you see if you turn around as you're heading to Harlan Roach's office, you you just see her bent over and oh 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 my back. She's a little older lady. Um, all right, so you're knocking on the door of Harlan. Oh, well, 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 you know, we need to help her with a lot more than the radio. We need to help her with her love life and her posture and all kinds of things. Bernie, oh. as, as Celeste, why don't you take lead on this? I just want to sit in the back and observe and take notes. So you go ahead and ask Mr. Roach why the heck he reported these papers missing in the first place. Okay, a, see if you oh. have any criminal connections. I'm a little concerned, and maybe, Celeste, you can share in this concern about going straight to Roach, because if he is a suspect, as you suspect, Shyla, then we'll be tipping him off that we're investigating. And he will have a lot of time. What? What? (laughs) Element of surprise on our part. Hello, Mr. Roach. (laughs) Come on in, please. I'm so sorry, Bernie. I wish we'd expressed your opinions earlier. Hello, Mr. Roach. If I, um, I could have. I have some questions for you. <laughs> do, do you want to? Do you want to pause before you go in in the hallway? No, this this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is happening. This is happening. Okay. <laughs> Bernie Celeste, why don't you go in first and introduce yourself? Celeste. Yes. 
<rire> I, I was wonder of your presence. Enchanté. You are uh, Mr. Professor Roach, is that correct? Roach, yes, that's right. Uh, the dean has told me so much about you. You see, I am visiting from Paris and I do like to study up uh, whenever I am on tour. And uh, I was just trying to um, acquaint myself with everyone at the university here. And uh, really, uh, my friends and I here, we had just discovered that uh, there was recently a murder or, yes, or yes, a death. Beautiful fellow. Uh, all right. Well, a pleasure to have met you. And I must. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. wait. Oh, Cherie. Yes. Please. Uh, you have so much that you could tell me with your wisdom. And you've been here, obviously, for so long. I would love to hear more about your opinions of this uh, prestigious uh, establishment. Well, you'd be the first. It's funny that you noticed that, uh, as many would think, amongst all my published works, uh, that I would be first in line to perhaps, uh, I've gotten uh, to take a first look at these uh, Salem, uh, Arkham, uh, did I say Salem? It's Arkham Witch Trials papers. Uh, Interesting. Can uh, can... Charm, please, Celeste. Bien sûr, yes. Shyla elbows Bernie. And just go, good. <laughs> uh, Bernie looks irritated. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, she is here to talk a little bit about the mechanics of Call of Cthulhu. This is a D100 system, which means we roll two D10s, a 10s die and a 1s die, to create a percentage, uh, like so. And these fine folks have created character sheets where they have a series of skills, and the ones that they have allocated points to have a percentage written in them. Um, and you also have a couple options if a roll doesn't oh. go your way. The first option, and uh, to the players, some of you I told you uh, about these options, and I may have not told everyone ahead of time, so I'll tell you right now. The first option is you can push your roll. This means you get a re-roll, and if you fail that re-roll, there will be consequences for your actions. So you could decide not to push, and you can help me decide what these dire consequences might be, the way in which you would take it up a notch to do the thing further um or you can just decide to fail and that's fine the other thing you can do is you may spend your luck points luck is a stat that you could roll for and it is also a resource that you may spend um, but my house rule and same with my friends over on stream of blood is that no more spending more than 10 points on a single roll got so, it I could try and push. Is am I pushing my luck here by trying to reroll? I'm going to tell you that this is going to take a hard success because mm. Harlan Roach is not a people person. He was a rival to Charles Leader. If you ask anyone at the university, and and seems that you could tell just from his demeanor, he's a nervous and a sweaty man with thinning hair and spectacles, mm. just always sort of disheveled. He's dressed like a professor in a plaid coat and tie, but it's all, all, uh, he's, he doesn't care much what people think of him. They, he just wants them to read his published works and to gain esteem. Well, I might as well try. Okay. What could go wrong? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was already going to leave anyway, so. Oh no, merde. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, these dice are being excommunicated. They're going away. Prison. Here. While he turns to you and says, Miss, are you trying to get into my favor in some way? Because I'll have you know, I cannot be manipulated by a beautiful woman. In fact, I don't even see such things. If you could leave my office, unless you have something to further discredit the disreputable Mr. Leader. And because you know that, that patrol, he's shoving y'all out the door. Well, it's your loss. Excuse me? Should I call security from the campus? 
Well, let me tell you, Mr. Roach, security's already here because I am Shia Mystere, private investigator, and I am the authority in this room, and I will ask you to calm your voice when speaking to a lady. Sir, you have insulted us, and you have done nothing but irritate us, and we are already investigating you. So why don't you tell us something about this man you don't like that we can use, or we're going to continue to ask you questions? Can you roll for... <laughs> In intimidation? <laughs> Intimidate, yeah. I feel like that's intimidation oh, right there. No! No! <laughs> you did this! You made this choice, Kate! I he did! He stepped closer to you and he's looking right down at What's you. What's this breath smell like? Coffee. It smells like coffee and no brushed teeth for a week. Oh my Wait, god. I think you didn't roll very well. So I don't have any intimidation. Becca, please remind me exactly what I need to roll to make sure I've rolled the right thing. I don't want to do this wrong. All right. So the base will be in the parentheses. Yeah, you've got 15% as default. Right. Uh, so so you, can, uh, you can do that, or you can explain to me how maybe this is uh, persuasion, although it does feel like intimidation. <laughs> What'd you roll? <laughs> I'm gonna say I that. didn't roll well. Let's just say that. You look to me like not a lady at all, but a mere child. And if there's one thing I like less than women folk, it's children. Whoa. Get out of my office! <laughs> uh, he is going to take Shida out and I will close his door. I will not let him close the door. <gasps> mm. uh, that scumbag leader must be a scumbag themselves. Is Shida crying? We can just pin it on him. He's terrible. Oh, <laughs> Shelly. Shida's feeling hurt, so she's like, let's <laughs> rig oh. this whole thing. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Yes. Oh, now. Many maybe, more. Maybe I should let Bernie take the lead because uh I'm sorry, Bernie, I, I stepped on you wanting to be discreet and, and stealthy. It was meant to be. We can't deny destiny, Becca. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, that, that man was an asshole, so uh listen, no shy. If if we got hurt every time a man said or thought or did something bad to us, you know, we wouldn't get anything done. So you got to keep your chin up and move on, all right? The proto-feminist tuity. <laughs> all right. Vendors and high waste. And we like tried you? your plan, all right, and it went yes. about expected. Let's talk to someone nicer. That didn't, that didn't make me feel good at all. Maybe, and Celeste, uh, if you have a thought on this. Maybe we just go to the office where the papers were meant to be and we take a look with our more discerning eye and just make sure they aren't there before we key off to anybody who might know their location and they remove them. Certainly. Uh, I would also definitely be interested in uh, learning more about the scene. Uh, you know, who was the man? Was it Whitcroft that found the body? Which man? Oh yeah, Wheatcroft, you're right. Yes, sorry. Or was it Wheatcroft's assistant? Uh, Amelia, it was that Amelia? It, it was uh, according Amelia. to your notes that Amelia, uh, with an E, <laughs> um, oh, no. hater, okay, <laughs> leader's assistant, the dead guy. Got it. Oh, she hmm. was leader's assistant. Okay, and, and she found him. She found Tyler him dead. Was given the key to leader's office, office. Yes. by the dean. Perfect. Yes. So I think that would be a good place to. To search as well. Oh my gosh! I totally took the keys earlier from the dealer in his pocket. I put them in the pocket. Let's we go. know. We know. Yeah. Well, I forgot. So I can you it. give it to me or Celeste? Then, if you're just gonna forget, you have the keys. How How about they were safe in my pocket, and now we have them, so it's all good, and we can go. What the fuck is that? A jug of moonshine. <laughs> 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 I have my scotch and I have my moonshine. <laughs> Beck is like, I know I have on the stream tonight. Let's just double fist this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. My moonshine. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. 
Now, uh, you you are in fact in the histories department, and that is where Charles Leader, uh, as you you may know from the dean, uh, also mm -hmm. had his specialty. Uh, uh, you can look around more in this building if you like. Oh wait, is that is that where Leader's office is or no? It is. It is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can we go? Is that okay, y'all? Or yes, yes. Oh, I, I think was that's a great idea. Going to suggest why don't you two take a look inside the office, and I will stay out in the hall uh, just in case anyone comes by. Are you uh, sure, you Celeste? Think? I've always felt like you had an eye for the details. Ah. You would think, but uh, my skills rest more in dealing with people and distractions, so to say. Well, that's very good. I'm not very good at being subtle, so it's nice that we have someone here to cause distractions. Okay, that's a good plan. All right, well, let's execute it. As you walk down the hallway, you see a woman coming out of the lazy ladies' restroom, uh, a young woman, and walking into... Amelia! A <laughs> Turns immediately. Oh! <laughs> I'm just gonna yell at every woman until it's Amelia. <laughs> Amelia Court. Yes. Um. <clears throat> she she's holding a stack of books. She must have been walking from the bathroom with them. Were you were you uh, doing some light reading in the, in in the loo? I'm always doing reading. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Who are you? What are you reading? Just a few histories. About what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing Boston accent. Pops the car and hop and Just a little reading. <laughs> very this is the same. I'm trying to do a, 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 a Boston accent. Okay, let, me do, let me do Australian. <laughs> let me get into character. How <laughs> bad, 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 bad. <laughs> My name is Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> You did mention there might be some people coming by to ask questions about the professor. Please step into his office, if you will. And she leads you. There's a plaque on the door next uh, next to the door uh, of the room she was just heading into. Yeah, another What's... thick mahogany door. You said there's a plaque. It says Professor Charles Leader, histories. Is there any any like naughty symbols or words scratched into it? No. <laughs> Why'd you make that face? <laughs> there are no nautic symbols <laughs> scratched into the wooden plaque in this esteemed university. Such Listen. a specific it's question. question. He's he was dead. Like, He's dead. And you know, maybe someone was like, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> that is you gotta look for that evidence. You know, it's it it happens. Criminals just you know, I'm listening. At uh, the bar, that's all people do is scratch shit into wood. <laughs> so yeah. With the police department. Uh, uh, you know that, what? Why don't you uh, answer our questions like we are? So, Miss Amelia. She immediately in your in a, a small wooden chair by the door of the office, inside the office. Don't, Amelia, don't look. We're both young women. It's okay. I'm going to be gentle with you. It's a scary situation. We're just trying to get to the bottom of this. Don't you be afraid. Now, first question. I wrote your name down here. Is your name Amelia Covert or Amelia Court? Court. Amelia Court. Amelia okay, and what e. were you doing on the day that the pretzel, I mean, fetus body was found? <laughs> she means Professor Leader. Professor. Leader. 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 I'm right behind the desk there. I came in in the morning and the door was locked, seemingly from the inside. And I called for the custodian. He was nearby in the hallway. He, he had a set of master keys and he opened the door. I came in and started going about my work. I'm, I'm helping him to document and, and research the Arkham Witch. Hold on. Yes. The custodian I is a night job. You were coming into the Professor Leader's office at what? Midnight, 2 a.m.? No. Oh, so you just said it was seemingly locked from the inside. How did you know that? Well, <laughs> because I, I tried to unlock it, and when we came in, he, he seemed to have locked himself inside. It didn't make much sense. Can I uh, get a read on her? At 8 a.m. Oh, I yeah. like that, Celeste. 
Sure. Do you want to roll for psychology? Oui. Oui. Hey, I passed. Uh, but it's it's a hard success. Sure. Less Ooh. than half. It's less than half, yes. Excellent. Uh, she's definitely telling you the truth. Okay. She does not seem to be hiding something. Uh, she she seems to be telling the truth with everything she's told you so far. That's the okay. thing. She's not hiding something about what she's saying. But what else is she hiding? I'm happy to participate in any way necessary. And in fact, I'd like to get to the bottom of it. Of it. I hear the papers are missing. Were you? Was, what papers? Oh, oh my God, Charlotte. Oh, which pile <laughs> documents that were recovered from the Hob House estate after the passing of a, a very old man, an octogenarian, I hear. Okay. Yes. Don't worry, don't worry, Bernie. I was just checking she knew what papers we were looking for or if she was looking for different. There's a lot of paper in the world. Okay, we can uh, start with your... um how close were you to Mr. Leader? Well, to be quite honest, I found the man rather distasteful. He had habits that I don't necessarily approve of. I like to keep everything on the up and up, and, well, his reputation for gambling was well known by anyone who took two minutes to follow his activities. Mm. Uh, and but I do very much love this work, and I would very much like to recover the missing papers so I may continue. It is my goal to become a professor here someday or at some other reputable or even an Ivy League university. I have high ambitions, even though it's difficult for a woman. Two yes, yeah. questions. First question. Okay. Would you do anything to become a professor? Uh, what a strange question. <laughs> I would do Why don't you ask it faster than you're answering right now? Instead of taking your time to come to make up an answer, fabricate is the word I was looking for. She looks to Celeste and Bernie for help. Uh, <laughs> Shyla, Shyla, Shyla. And closer. Okay, okay, okay. I get First close to Shyla on. and I, yes. I whisper into Shyla's ear. Yes. Look, I do not think she is lying to us. Perhaps we should uh, be a little kinder here. Not so much a suspect. Okay, you got it, Celeste. I hear you, and you know what? I trust you. Amelia? I would do most things to become a professor, but not without so, earning it. Earning it is the most important thing to me. I have another question for you, if that's okay with you. You don't need is to put that okay gloves. I'm, I'm used to dealing with men in an academic setting, and I can okay. take it. I will gently ask you a second question. What so, do these papers that are missing contain, if you remember? Gentleness. That's a very interesting question. I, I don't know that I should be sharing this with just anyone. You can trust us. You uh, can trust but us. Ideally, we will be finding them to return anyway, so. Right. Better that we are prepared, no? Yes. Well... Some think that they may have certain mystical properties. They were recovered in a leather folio with satchel straps, uh, around 60-ish unbound pages within. And, of course, we have been going through them and documenting them and researching their implications. It turns out Mr. Joshua Hobhouse was a descendant of Caleb Hobhouse, who was, in fact, a jurist. In the Arkham Witch Trials. And you can tell her extreme excitement in talking about this. I'm from the area and, well, I, I, it's just always been of interest to me. Fascinating. I'm sorry, Sid. Thank you so much for sharing with us your information. You can trust us to help you. We like women also. We are also, I believe, all of us similar in our ambition. ambition so if there's any further information you can provide us to help us in this case that would be very useful to us and we will be gentle with you right gentle. excellent well yes uh, nothing off the top of my head but if i can be of any use i would like to be 
Recovering these papers is extremely important to me. In fact, if you'd like me to go with you anywhere or take no, you No, that won't be necessary. Damn, shut but down. But I do okay. have a mission for you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Check this out. Hey, Amelia. Yes? So we have to continue alone because it's our job, but you mentioned earlier that your friend was a custodian who has the skeleton keys to all of the doors, perhaps? If you wish to become a professor, as I wish to become a full-on private investigator, week, which I already am, then you could get us those keys and we could gain access to anything we'd need here. And once we solve this case, we can put forward the case for you getting promoted to a professor. I can't that, imagine that's how it works. I, I, I see why you're an excellent investigator. That that skeleton key would come in handy. I don't, I believe the custodian's name is Richard? I'm not Richard. sure. Maybe or, Does he have a... Uh, uh, I, I don't know him well. I just, well, when I ran out the door around eight in the morning, he was in the hallway and uh, was just doing some sweeping. I, I don't know him personally. Does but he have... I'm sure the dean would provide you with any access you may need. Yes, yes. Does he have a, a somewhere that we can uh, go somewhere for the the custodian's office or some type? Uh, I I suppose there is some sort of closet in the administration building. Um, I'm actually going to go next door. I have a small office next to Mr. Leader's office. I, I just was coming to, well, check if there's any other books that I might be able to return to the library in here. And, and if you look around, you are in Charles Leader, the deceased professor's office, the place where his body was found. Hmm. Um, I... Shall I... I was going to say, shall I leave you two here as I make a quick little trip to find this uh, janitor's closet, so to speak? I heard that he likes to sweep, so perhaps if you make a mess, he can sweep up. You could distract him with your womanly wiles. Ah, yes, yes. Good thinking, Shaila, yes. Totally, we can still party if you want. Something tells me Celeste doesn't need a pile of dust to get a man's attention, but okay. Um, That's true. She that sounds to be good. She distract from her because she's so attractive. Sorry, I said that in front of you. I know that's embarrassing. Okay, bye-bye for now. Okay. All right, so uh, Celeste, as you head back out of the Histories building and outside to go back to the administration building, Bernie and Shyla, do you want to look around at all in here? Oh, absolutely. Well, can I ask everybody. Amelia something really quick? Is she uh, still here? Sure, she hasn't left quite yet. She, um, she got out of the chair where she okay. was. Okay. Uh, uh, Amelia, before you, you leave, you said um, you said Professor Leader was a bit of a gambler. Well, I don't know exactly, but that was his reputation. You hear whispers, you know. Well, I mean, you said, you know, anybody who kept an eye on his activities. That's what you said. So you must have kept an eye on his activities. I did hear a thing or two. I may have overheard him with a lady friend on the phone talking about a trip to Atlantic City or maybe several. Trip to Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. Do you know, would he ever have put up something big on a bet? You know, more than money, like his mortgage, his house, uh, you know, his car. His life. He seems like exactly the sort of person who would do that sort of thing. What about the papers? If they're worth as much as you said they are. Bernie. Well, I certainly so hope good. not. You know, there's something else. I can't put my finger on it, but he was so keen to work from home, specifically with the papers. I practically had to pry the papers out of his hands at certain points just to do my work. Is that well, there, there was some reason he wanted to take them out of the university for periods of time. Do you think he was worried about somebody else getting a hold of them, or and he felt more secure with them at home, or? I suppose it could be. Or somebody the opposite, perhaps somebody he wanted to see them that didn't have access to the university. It could be that as well. But I will tell you this, he did seem increasingly paranoid. In, in the last few weeks before his passing. In what way? 
<laughs> if I was looking over his shoulder, you see, my dear. He seemed on edge at all points in time, really erotic. <laughs> Hold on a yeah. second. This is, this Not is getting all. really I interesting. Hold on a second. Erotic. Not what I... <laughs> Wait, <laughs> we not, not becoming erotic? Was that... Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. I got excited. You said he was becoming... Erratic. 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 Okay, that's a different E word. I'm about my tongue. Uh, pardon me. But there <laughs> is one more thing that I noticed. I was dropping off some materials to him at his cottage, and I noticed receipt for Where a was change of locks. A locks. change of locks. Yes. I can recall the date, too. I believe it was September 13th that I was there and I saw this receipt. I remember because I had uh, an appointment with the dentist that day, and I do particularly enjoy the dentist. And what were you getting done at the dentist, I ask you, young lady? The routine cleaning. Why'd she yeah. say it like that? <laughs> that's she really she liked the dentist. fan of the Nova King. Which I hear is a chemical compound that makes you feel fantastic. I do turn down the Novocaine anytime it is offered. I like to keep a clear head at all times. You understand? How boring. Okay. So. I I just want to put it out there that as a bartender, I see a lot of illicit activities. And certainly some of it includes back, back room and back alley gambling. And I've seen that look a lot. When they owe someone real big. You know, someone's coming after them. They don't Next know who, time. they don't know when, and they don't know how, but they know it's coming. So they're looking over their shoulder. They're getting paranoid and erotic. I mean, erratic. <laughs> I see. You understand it's how closely related those words are and how someone really can to mix them up. There's one more thing. Uh, will I mention you? You said that you know, five times, Amelia. No, like, there's you a lot of things. things that I know as the person who found this body. Huh. <laughs> Maybe you don't want to know then. Are you you can't tell me. <laughs> well, you got a roll for charm now. No, I thought. <laughs> We you that was, was a bump game. Corner. That was a bump game back and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned there was a woman friend that I overheard on the phone recently, frequently. I believe she worked at Hibbs Roadhouse. Have you heard of it? <gasps> That's where I work! <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps you know someone named Lucy. <gasps> Lucy? She's my best girl. <laughs> I don't know her last name. I couldn't tell you her last name. Uh, but uh, I did hear them speaking on the phone several times. My office is just the small one right next door. What sort of things would they talk about? What Atlantic they talk City. About? They just talk about Atlantic City. I don't. I overheard bits and pieces here and there, but like, let's go to Atlantic, and Atlantic City. Let's. It was nice when we went to Atlantic City. Let's That's run away to Atlantic City. <laughs> I don't know exactly. <laughs> Anyway, um, Bernie, you can roll to see if you know Lucy's last name. Yeah. Um, what would that be, darling? Um, this is actually going to be one of your characteristics at the top. I think this is just your general knowledge, so you can roll for education. <laughs> easy. <laughs> GG, easy. <laughs> You're just laughing. <laughs> I fucked it up so fast. I'm sorry, can I do a cuss? You can do a cuss. Okay. It's already I know, but one is good. One F-bomb and you can still be PG-13. I'd have to check a different box, but oh. No, 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 no. I didn't say it, so don't worry about it. Um, I, I failed it, if you didn't understand what I was saying. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> you don't know Lucy's last name, but there is someone named Lucy that just started working at Hibbs Roadhouse. You don't know her too well. You know, not a lot of bartenders and servers and employees in, you know, the speakeasy game really give last names. Mm. It's not really a, an above board kind of work, if you know what I mean. Mm. Is there a reason we would need to know her last name? Uh, if you want to find her. Taxes. Just go down there and 
Yeah, Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, sorry. Let's. Uh, add, we'll cut seed. And uh, Celeste has knocked on the gender <gasps> closet, the custodian's office, actually. I'm ready. Uh, and uh, an older gentleman opens the door. Oh, before I can clean for you. Yes, right before I knocked, I would have taken out. Uh, I have a small flask of absinthe and just spilled a little bit. Uh, on my on my uh, dress, right uh, around my thighs, basically. And so, so I will knock, and when he answers, ah, yes, oh, thank goodness that you are here. Uh, I seem to have made a mess. Uh, could you maybe help me just a little bit? I, I I would. I just need to clean up. Is it okay? Can I come in? This is one of my favorite dresses, and I don't want it to, to be a ruin. Can you help me? Well, no, so, certainly. Uh, step right in here, Miss. Uh, it's not much, but uh, Miss. The same as the same. <laughs> okay, and I will sit down. And can I see the keys anywhere on him? Uh, they're on his waistband. Yeah, they're on his belt. He's an older man, very hunched over, white hair, and big doughy eyes. He, he seems like a, a kind man. Okay. Well, do you have a rag or uh, or anything? Just, uh, why, of course I do. And he turns around, and he's got a whole pile of them, and he, he knocks it over, and they all fall <laughs> over me. A woman so beautiful has never been in my office before. And he grabs him off the floor and then he starts patting your lap with him and then he looks up at you with shock at his own actions. Oh, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. No, 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 I, I take no offense. Just uh, merci, just anything that will help. And I read the rag and starts blotting his own head. I will, uh, with my left hand, I will touch his face gently and say, I really appreciate this. Your kindness is unparalleled. And I will try to take the keys with my right hand as I do this. <laughs> you don't have to roll for charm because he is charmed, girl. But you are going to need to roll for sleight of hand to see if he notices you messing with the keys on his belt or if they jangle and whatnot. Oh okay. my God, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> this is all that needed to happen this episode. <laughs> it is a success. I got a 24 under my 40 sleight of hand. He doesn't feel a thing. You have <laughs> no, everything. I mean, he feels thing. something. <laughs> <laughs> Put a, a, few, a glass of water. <sighs> no, but uh, oh, thank you so much. I appreciate this. I really do. Look, I'm all cleaned mm -hmm. up now. Merci, Oh, and the alcohol I smell is <gasps> very exotic. Yes, it was he, a little absent. Freaking out. <laughs> a little absent. Um, would you like a little bit? There's some left in the flask if you have some water uh, as well. Oh, he turns around. There's a faucet and a sink. He turns around. I leave. He turns around very slowly. He's a very old man. Now, let me tell you about one time when I was a younger man. You hear as you leave the room and as he turns around, he's just holding a glass of water and he says, did I imagine her? <laughs> <laughs> and I make my way back to my ladies. Oh Excellent. my God. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, I, have you looked around the office at all? Yes, I've touched everything. <laughs> okay. So, you know, uh, uh, so you see a, a big desk. It's not a huge room, but there's a fireplace. And behind the desk, there is a, a mirror on the wall that is mirror. shattered. Mm -hmm. Shattered. That's a good sign. <laughs> Are you French? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's contagious. I'm trying to impress the less. <laughs> Hey, Bert. <clears throat> you know, I've read a lot of. You know what? I've done a lot of cases. You've you know written what? a lot of fanfic. I, 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 <laughs> you know, I have some fanfic. It's more about the closure to what happened fanfic? in the last scene than what's happening right now. But I'll read it to you later. It's very great, especially when I narrate it. 
she touched his luscious lips. Anyway, point well, is. <laughs> his lips were not so luscious. The they were shriveled she and pruned. She touched his shriveled, pruned so she's lips. talking about her fanfic, Becca, not... Okay. She's not caring about, like, about knowing Celeste about counters. Celeste isn't no. back yet. I'll tell you about my stories later. It's how I make a living. So, I thought you were a detective. That's what I would like you to think. I'm glad it's working. So, <laughs> what is Shyla doing? It looks like, if I remember correctly, according to my notes, that the guy died down here in the fetal position behind his desk, but the mirror behind his desk is shattered. That makes me think that there was a struggle, perhaps a fight, and he was trying to defend his life, and instead he died. I think there was an accomplice involved. I think that Dean didn't die of a heart attack. I think he was murdered. That page is blank, Shyla. Salem! <laughs> it's actually it's Arkham, like, the GM. Totally Arkham, I guess I'd say one. It's the Arkham Witch Trials. <laughs> that is, that is <laughs> I think we have how, a murderer. How high is the mirror up on the wall? Uh, eye level, with the probably the, the human deep, height. The, the professor hung it for himself, so he, he was it's a tall man. It's not on the ceiling, it's not a sex mirror. In fact, Shyla, there's a photo I'm of him on the wall. <laughs> Charles Leader has not only his certificates framed on the wall, he also has a photo of himself when he graduated from his uh, his graduate studies. His back shattered. He's a very handsome man. Uh, he, he he looks like uh, he he could charm the pants off. Celeste, I what does this have to do with anything? I don't know. You're looking around the office. Is it broken? Funny what you see? Is the picture of him broken? It is not. Okay, can I take a closer look at the mirror to see if there's any, like, blood or hair? Because I feel like if someone's head was bashed into it, there would be some sort of remnant of that. I would love for you to check the mirror. Give me a spot hit and roll. Okay! <laughs> I will open up the door. Presumably you're still in the same place, yes? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, you just you made are. your way back. We have wasted so much time. <laughs> Bonjour, <laughs> madame. So let's go. You're back. Look what I found. Ooh, jingle, oh, jingle, she's got the keys. Oh, you're wet. Did something spill on you? Do you need Wait a, a minute? I have a what? A rag in my pocket. Rag pocket. Oh, wow, you are so prepared, Bernie. Bernie, how'd you roll on your spot hidden? I feel <laughs> Celeste <Okay>. distracted me. <laughs> huh? Okay, does anybody else want to look at the mirror? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I'm actually looking at the mirror oh yes what's out oh i i see absolutely nothing i'm distracted by a bird outside <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah there is Where's a the really nice ever. tree uh, and a blue jay is in the tree outside there's a blue jay have you seen a blue day before it's blue but it's also other colors so it's weird that they called it a blue what's happening in this oh the death Celeste, murder what would you okay. like to do well, I find it interesting thinking that these are pitch, pick, no, these are, are, are documents of uh, witch trials. Is there anything else in the room? I'm not good at spot hidden, but is there anything else in the room of occult nature, perhaps, that stands out as, is it just these documents or is there, uh, was Great he question. involved? The desk is very full. It's messy. There are papers scattered all over it. Uh, it seems like the papers have been rifled through quite a few times. And you were told uh, by the dean that, uh, of course, the man you met, Mr. Harlan Roach, uh, was given permission to look for the documents. He was the one that found that they weren't there. So... Uh, <sighs> roach, roach, roach. If, if you and look for the occult... Uh, uh, you don't notice anything upon a cursory glance, but you're welcome to make a spot hidden roll as well. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like it would be difficult. No, no, I, I'm good. Um, do you think that we should revisit Mr. Roach? Is that worth anything? Or perhaps, you know, wait Just, for him to leave? Here's the thing. Again, I'm sorry I keep bringing this up, but I feel it's relevant. I work in speakeasies. I know how people hide things, all right? 
So I'm just I'm going to go around in the room and, I, and I'm going to I'm going to knock on on the wood of the walls and we'll see if there's anything, perhaps a, a hidden safe or chamber or something. Uh-huh. A hollowness in the wall. Smart. Yes. Sure. Is there a skill besides spot hidden that you listen. think would work for this? Listen. <laughs> it's listen. That good. Oh, oh you're going to use your ears. listen skill. I thought you were telling me to listen. No. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Back That's in, amazing. Back in listen. Back in listen. <laughs> No, the listen skill. Sorry. We're going to knock really on confusing. the walls and listen to the wall. Uh, See if there's a hollow spot in any of at any point in the wall. Sure. Um, we'll see if Shiloh allows uh, it to be quiet enough in this office for the day. You know, she's pressing her ears. I learned the other day that hummingbirds migrate south. Oh, we barely if doing I, something. She got mad at me last time. Hold on. Yes, I go up to Shiloh and I just... Oh my God! Okay, this is, oh this, is, this is what happens to Shyla. I just write it. <laughs> oh. Um, I got a thirty-one, and then I'm going to use one of my luck points to Excellent. make it a thirty for a hard Ooh. success. Ooh. You hear hard. some hollow near the uh, the certificate of graduate studies on the wall and if you pull slightly on it there is a hinge and behind it there's an opening can i see in the opening sure it's just a hole in the wall and inside are a few papers as you pick them up you see they are uh an, an something in progress there's a document that is very official looking uh, it has a stamp and of uh it's dated um 1700s and there is another document that's almost exactly the same in penmanship and everything else except it's halfway done we're looking at a counterfeiter. All right. I, I, Celeste, Shyla, I said. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at a oh. counterfeiter. Can I, I, remove, I remove <laughs> my finger. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh, a counterfeiter. How do you know? Show me what you found. Let me see the evidence. Is it well, look at the these papers. Well, let me see those papers. Look at these papers. Once, once halfway done, right? It's And that's why I wanted to take them home. It's because he was... Needed more times to be copying them side by side. So he's copying them. Why would he be making a copy of them? So we could keep the originals to sell to pay off his gambling debt. Of course. It's my theory. Of course. Celeste, what have you deduced? What have I deduced? It seems that this man had quite the gambling problem, yes? Do we see any sort of papers that might uh, suggest anyone that he has relations with? Uh, is there a planner somewhere? I mean, we uh, know about Lucy down at the Hob House. Or sorry, yes. the, the, right? The Hob Road, Hob sh- Road House. Higgs Road House. Hob yes. House. This is, is your fault, the, Becca. Uh, you named something Higgs and Hobbs, and that ain't right. <laughs> it, I would never do such a thing. This is scenario created by a very brilliant <laughs> author. <laughs> uh, Celeste, as you're sifting through the papers on the desk, you come upon a matchbook that says Hibbs Roadhouse on one side, and it has a heart and with mm. Lucy written on the back. It's a matchbook. Yes, yes. No, I was wondering more the relations of uh, who he owes money, perhaps, you know, oh. meetings of, of more nefarious nature. But perhaps Lucy is the one that we should ask. Well, if we go down to the roadhouse, we can talk to Lucy and I can talk to some of my more nefarious contacts. And perhaps they have more access to perhaps what uh, Professor Leeds's history is. Just as you say that, and you're all looking at each other, discussing what to do next. The lights cut out. Of course, there was that bluebird out the window, but the shutters slam shut. Papers start to fly off the desk in a flutter, and you see a glowing red light coming from the shattered bits of mirror still upon the wall, and hear a grotesque growl start to come right from the image inside the mirror and you see what looks like an eye and that's where we'll take a break for 10 minutes what 
<laughs> Everybody stay tuned. We're going to take a quick bio break um, and we'll be back in exactly 10 minutes. So mark your clock for 8. 40 if you're on Pacific time. Don't go anywhere. And if you're watching the VOD, skip ahead. <laughs> no, watch the intermission. <laughs> watch the intermission. We put a lot of work into that.
Okay, don't go anywhere. I told you not to. And if you did, you did wrong. We are back. We're not done with this episode. We have more shenanigans with this insane cast for you right now. And right before we hop back into it, I want to quickly say Chaosium is the absolute coolest for sponsoring this show. I'm obsessed with Call of Cthulhu. And I just got to say, they've been around for 40 years as the premier publisher of Innovative Games that changed the way we play. Not only Call of Cthulhu, but also RuneQuest and 7th C are some amazing role-playing games from Chaosium, and you can find all of their stuff at chaosium.com. Go check it out. We're giving away PDFs for some for the starter set for Call of Cthulhu, as well as at the end of the night, we're going to do one keeper rule book in chat, in Twitch. So be sure and stay tuned till the end of the episode for those giveaways. And uh, also, when you buy the hard copy book, you get a free PDF online. So that's super sweet because, you know, who doesn't want everything in both digital and hard copy shipping Australia wide? And 
also, I believe, worldwide. All right, let's bring back our incredible players who are in the office of the deceased professor, Mr. Charles Leader. We have Celeste Eau Claire, played by Josephine McAdam, Bernice Bernie James, played by Havana Mahoney, and Shyla Mustaire, played by Kate Elliott. And let's just see, uh, because I've been told people hate when I add in different orders. There we go. You're in the same spot. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> hey, okay. So you are in the office and the lights have gone off. The shutters slammed themselves shut. I'm going to need each of you to roll for sanity. Oh. We are trying to roll under our sanity, we? Or yes. is this different? Okay. Yes, suck it. Merde. <laughs> it's a failure from me. This shit is crazy. Has Sebastian <laughs> ever seen anything? I know she's a practitioner of the occult, but she has she ever seen anything in person that is this uh, supernatural? Hmm. Uh, I don't think she's seen any uh, red glowing eyes looking back at her from a shattered mirror. No, not yet. All right, I'm going to roll. Roll, roll, rag. Oh, oh, <laughs> let me just shout out Nine Realms Gaming, who sent me this incredible <laughs> dice tower. What the Ooh. hell? Oh, and that, you. that is thick. It thick. I, I'll tell you about it. I'll tell you about it. It tell thick. Tell me about it. So let's please take one sanity loss. Oof. From the devastating image of it's a red not bad. eye that's turned into your own retinas. Shyla, did you pass? You know, I've seen a lot of eyes in the mirror when I looked in the mirror before, so I'm not too surprised. It's just more eyes. I mean, the voices aren't screaming in my head like they usually are, so it can't be that bad. I rolled really well. Oh my god, there's so much to unpack. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The shutters just start to shake and shudder, and you hear from inside the mirror something just says, Release me. And you feel a, a wind that had flown the papers from the desk around the room just cease immediately as the shutters fly back open. And there's nothing in the mirror again. See, there's nothing to worry about. It always passes. If you can just weather the storm, I mean, nightmares, nightmares. But what is going on here? Tyler, what are you talking about? This happens to you regularly? Yes, it what, did not what do happen you to you regularly? No. no. Well then, okay. Well, I guess I got another time. It's going to be a like, private investigator extraordinaire. Let's see what's going on in this room. I'm going to check the desk. I, uh, I let go of Bernie's hand, which I had clutched uh, in my fear. Uh, yes, let us just uh, try and figure out what has happened here. I would like to check the desk. Sure. Oh, uh, give me a spot hidden. Stuck drawers and stuff. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, I rolled. I rolled very nice. I rolled. Uh, I rolled within 20 points of my spot hidden. Up below it? Yes. Got it. Uh, you find buried beneath this paper something that maybe no one else that came through here thought was of value. There is a piece of artwork, a very fine pointed a pen has drawn it and uh, it's very detailed intricate sort of a mandala it seems of of eastern origin and it is signed Cecil Hunter in the corner. Hey, look, I found a mandala art signed by Cecil, Cecil, Cecil. I Hunter. can't read it, but it's signed by the artist. Look at this. I I don't know much about art, Celeste. Uh, let me take a look. Look at it. Uh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. You see it? I, I see it. See it? I, I, uh, yeah. Okay. What is it? What is it? Do I know what it is? Keeper? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> what I was looking at the comments that say this will never end uh, in our private chat. <laughs> never. Uh, Where does do it you know what it is? Oh, oh, I said that. 
<laughs> I don't think you are familiar with this artist. Do you recognize this artist? I, I, oh, I, okay, no, I, I do, I do not uh, know this one in particular. We, we don't all know each other, you know. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. But perhaps we can find out. Let. Why don't you write down this name in your little notebook? Fijo. Okay. And then I can, uh, you know, we can ask uh, some of the artists in town. Perhaps they would know more. All right. Just to uh, review information, uh, you have the artist, piece of art that you found. Uh, you have the keys to the university, all of them in Celeste's possession after wow. seducing uh, an old custodian. Wow. Uh, Shyla <laughs> was handed the key not only to this very office, but to Leader's home. And uh, you found the matchbook to the Hibs Roadhouse. Um, yes. Uh, are we not supposed to report back to the dean? I mean, this is what the hell is this? I mean, the the no, mirror no. just spoke to us. No, I, you know what? Don't worry about those voices. The voices come and go. But you it, know what's interesting? It said, it said "Release me." Wait, he said words. I just heard "habla habla." <laughs> Dang. No, okay, there well, there were words. So, do you think? Was he speaking to you directly or was he speaking to all of us? Perhaps someone was casting a spell to release something or is it direct to you? Because you do have this air of mysteriousness about you. So. Well, oh, I heard it too, so I, I don't think it was direct. Oh. But I do know if I'm trapped in a small space, I want out. And I really don't give a shit who releases me. So I'll just shout it out, you know. Did right you up. have a source? Where did we think that the voice maybe came from? Kind of I mean, coming from inside the mirror. The mirror. Uh, I'm I going checked to... the walls. There's nothing back behind there. Wait a minute. Is this piece of art? You said it was art. Is this a map? Does you feel like a map to anyone else? No. Okay. Never mind. Bernie, uh, why don't you? What? Here's this thing. Okay. We got two places we can go right now. We can go check out where those matchsticks came from, and with the Lucy person who you know, Bernie, who you can probably get some information out of. And if you can't, then Celeste can do her woo woo thing, and then we can get information because you're very good at that. I'm not judging you. I'm saying you're very good. So we could do that, or we could go to the the dead fetus man's house. Shyla, I need. I think you need to take a minute because you're kind of treating Celeste like an object. I, I'm absolutely not. I'm trying to ad, 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 admire her skills and, and, and give her credit for the charm that she has in this situation, which I do not have to less. If you're giving private tutorials okay, on okay, how to have okay. charm, then I would love to take part. But what I'm saying is you have a skill I don't have. And then and then and 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 and, and you have connections I don't have, Bernie. So it's up to you two to decide where we go next. I <laughs> oh, should also that? I left out of that list uh that you were were you told that the corpse is still on site. What? Wait up, oh, hold on. Let's yeah, not in the room. Not that. in the room. Hold, you hold never on. told us that. You never I would said like to that. See Felix I'm sorry. I didn't do that. that Why Dr. Has been at the university for ten days. What do you mean, Becca? I want to see his open eyes. <laughs> I told you that Dr. John Wheatcroft, who performed, who was the coroner for Aye. this special case is yeah. at the Miscatonic Medical School nearby. Oh, uh, that okay. body All is right. just sitting there. Okay. We need, so we to, got three we need places to, to go. Go take a look at this. Uh, can I pick up a piece of the broken mirror? Sure. Oh, my God. She's going to eat it. Don't eat that. That's sharp. No, I'm just going to put it in my bag. Okay. Take it with me. That was a Excellent. close call. <laughs> She almost ate. Is it uh, common that people eat mirrors where uh, in Arkham? I'm sure you do that. Have you ever eaten a potato chip? I know it's a new invent invention, but it cuts the roof of your mouth. I, I imagine a mirror is way worse. Don't eat Prohibition that. leads people to some crazy stuff. I mm. think you know, we're, where would you like to go? <laughs> this uh, the medical department, yes. Yes, what? I want to see the fetus. I mean, yes, I would like to investigate the body. Did you say fetus? He was I mean, in the fetal position. Ah, we, 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 yeah, okay, okay. Here's the thing. If we're going to leave the building, can we at least just show the things we found to Amelia? She seemed to have a personal connection with Professor Leader. And oh, we, maybe she has some insight into the art, yeah. into the into the uh, the um the forgeries. 
May I suggest we show her the art before the screaming mirror piece? Uh, but she, Maybe I we don't still, mention the mirror thing. We don't mention the mirror thing. Okay. I'm still not yeah. sure about uh, Amelia. I feel like she uh, is more interested in acquiring the papers for herself, if you know what I mean. She wants a promotion, that's for sure. But so do we, honestly, if we really look at our lives. So you wait, 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 Shyla, wait, uh, uh, Celeste, yeah. uh, really? I, I, I didn't. It seemed like maybe she had an excited interest about the history of the city and possibly, you know, um, magic. Is that what, magical properties? But I, uh, you know, was she, did she seem uh, nefarious to you? No, not nefarious per se, but I think that her priorities are just on uh, perhaps acquiring this information herself. And for me... Uh, I, we're making a deal with the dean, you see, and I, I wouldn't want her to perhaps try to step in uh, the way. I just, I don't know if we're going to get better insight. She was her assistant. She was there every day, in and out, took care of his work things and his personal things. No, this is true. Yes, yes. Um, okay, do you want to head out of the building? Maybe maybe we just show the art and not the forgeries. Is that a oh, with that how better? Don't take those show with anything. You, we just ask him questions. Yeah. Did you take those or did you leave them in the wall? I took them. Okay. The art? I have the art in my jacket. You've got the art. You took the forgeries that were found. Yeah. No, right. no, I think um, we can still ask Amelia. I think you can still ask her. I just uh I, I just be on the lookout. I don't hand anything over, is what I would say. Absolutely, you know. You know what? I feel like if she wants something from us, we can say that we have that thing and tell her we have that thing, and even when we don't have that thing, and then she can give us what we need. I Shyla, I do I do she think that's head in the doorway is there anything else that i could help you with it's amelia celeste ah uh yes miss court um do you know anything about uh we seem to have stumbled upon some forgeries uh oh no it's worse than i thought what's worse than you thought well i knew the man was a gambler but a forger that that must have been is, what he was doing in his cottage. Huh. And uh, uh, Honestly, I feel stupid for not realizing it sooner. Don't feel stupid. You know, men are trash and they trick us. It's okay. They say con, con man's whole job to make sure no one else knows what he's doing. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's right. But I always pride myself in my intelligence. And when it's very you, smart. Do you have evidence of this or... You know what? We can't talk about the ongoing investigation, but if there's any further information you could provide to us to solve this case, then perhaps we could help you in your lifelong goal of becoming a professor. And uh, do you know anything about the artist Shiloh? What was that name once more? Cecil. The one you were... Cecil? Cecil Hunter. Cecil Hunter. 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 Cecil Hunter. That's the one. Oh, it rings a bell. Yeah, a loud bell with There was words? a Cecil. He was okay. a student here. I didn't know him myself. He, he was a bit of a miscreant, you see. He was kicked out. Yes, for oh, untoward for behavior. I don't know exactly. Moral turpitude is, is what uh, I heard. And no other specifics. But I do know that there was uh, someone who caused quite a stir named Cecil. I don't remember his last name. Hmm. Thank you so much, Miss Amelia. Well, certainly. There's there's one other person you may want to watch out for. He he yes. very much coveted my position as the research assistant on the uh, Arkham Witch Trials. You see, I believe he's studying it as his thesis. He he's a he's a strange fellow. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? He, yeah, he backed Can up. I against the wall now. Tell us. <laughs> Anthony Flanders. Oh. Anthony Flanders? Flanders. Flanders. Yes. Okay. Of um I believe where were they from? The Philadelphia Flanders maybe? I don't know. So many families have moved into Arkham. It's hard to keep track. Is that how Is you it? spell Flanders? Is that some sort of 
particular code you've written up yourself. Yes, his heart is spy code. Ah, uh, as okay, I am not a spy, it. I know nothing of such code. Okay. Anyway, um, look out for him. I, I, I don't want to say precisely that he's responsible for the missing papers, but he's a strange fellow, very interested in our research, and honestly, he, he sort of is a bully to me. He's a bully? It's just Hold on like, a second. Was he mean to you? Because I have no time for mean bullies. Honestly, I regret telling you, I'm now, <laughs> he's not someone you want, you want to get in the way of. I can get right in his way. I don't care. Why? What makes him so different? Yeah. Yes. Well, he seems nice enough at first, but I just have a feeling that he's capable of something dangerous. Can I do another psychology insight check? Whatever <laughs> it is to see if she's, um... Is this just a personal grudge, or is it like you know warranted sort of? Yes, it's a success. A twenty-three under the forty. Definitely a personal grudge. What? It can be both. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, she, this guy definitely. It doesn't seem like she's trying. Likes him. Okay, she's not trying to throw off our scent or anything. She's being genuine here. You're not exactly sure. Hmm. What 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 sort of role do you think he would play in this situation? All I know is that he desperately wanted to see those papers. He would be lurking in this hallway, waiting every time I was in there with Leader. I would see hmm. him, and he wouldn't smile, he wouldn't say hello. He would just stare at me unblinkingly, and as soon as someone else would walk down the hallway, he would smile and wave. He'd give me the dirtiest looks. Most unsettling. Uh, and what is your opinion of Professor Roach? Well, jealous of leader, of course. He, he was upset he was passed over to even get the project to begin with. I guess, uh, let's see. Uh, Anthony is to me <laughs> as, as Roach is to leader. Just jealous. A quick question. Is there anyone that... that Liked Mr. Leader? Everyone liked him. I mean, upon first meeting, he was very charming, very handsome, very affable, very quick to okay. laugh, very quick to put off work that he didn't want to do when he saw that I was more than capable. And honestly, I was willing to do it because it is the work that I love more than anything else. Uh, right, of course. Can I interject for one second? I'm so sorry. I've been told to be more gentle and quiet in this investigation, but you said something so interesting. You said that Roach was jealous of the dean, yet he was trusted to go and check to see if the paperwork was missing. He's the one that said that the paperwork was missing. Roach is very sus. I agree. He is indeed sus, as you say. Sus. Hmm. Well, Bernie, Celeste. Yes, no, I agree. I think we uh, can maybe come back and visit after hours and take a look with uh, our newfound uh, keys. But you for have now, keys to have Roach's office. Ah, uh, yes, just Roach's. Yes, he rubbed me the wrong way, and uh, <laughs> I'm waiting to get back. I see you are not someone she's, to be trifled with. No, well, she's right, making a process. joke. She's making a joke. She's not dangerous at all. She's highly trustworthy. She's just uh, a little, she was scorned by a lover, Celeste. And it's just uh, something personal. It's absolutely, we don't have any keys to anything, but the dean said we could get into any room we want to get into. And that's what she means by we have access to anything. Isn't that right, Celeste? Uh, you don't have to worry about me. I'm no rat. I keep my mouth shut and I take no interest in personal gossip. Anyway. I peed myself once in primary school. Your secret well, with me. Okay, we should uh, take our leave on that note. <laughs> okay. Sure, where would you like to go? Um, um, do we want to check in with the dean about why Cecil Hunter got exfoliated? Exfoliated? <laughs> <laughs> Expedited? Um, Yes, I think we should maybe check in, talk about the, ex, you know, the the talking mirror, all of these uh, stuff. Oh, you think we should bring that up? 
screaming. No, I don't think we should be so direct. Do you How mean do we know? Scott? Why not? He's the one who brought us into this whatever shit that's happening to us. That Why are you? He needs a master of everything and he knows everything. Perhaps there's more going on here and it's deeper than he even knows. And we're the ones to discover it and get famous from it and become very famous private investigators. I mean, dancers and bartenders. Um, you, you, get, you are at the dean's door. Do you decide to go in? I just, I'm not sure if we can know if he's a part of this or not. Hired us maybe to get rid of the evidence and unbeknownst to us. I bust open him, through so. the door. Okay. Uh, he's, he's just, uh, sitting, uh, seems to be writing a letter behind the desk. Who is yes. that letter for Mr. Dean? Tell us right now. Uh, it, it's a memorandum to the entire, his voice is a little <clears throat> It's a memorandum to the entire staff of the university. I'm just letting them know my condolences for the departed and that we will be accepting applications for a replacement professor. Interesting. Please. Why are you looking to bring someone in from outside of the faculty instead of promote one of yours within? I've heard that Amelia is a very good student and would like to be a professor. Why are you not putting her up for the position? Because she's a student. But if she graduates, <laughs> correct, will she not be ready for the position soon? By the time the position will be filled, why are you looking for outside people to fill the position? Do you have someone in mind, perhaps? One of your coordinates? Do you have someone that you're working with outside of this office? Tell us, Professor. I can see you are very strong in your investigation skills. I wonder if you've found anything that you'd like to share with me? Perhaps you have found more information that you would like to share with us, Professor. Do you want to roll for psychology? Wow, wow. <laughs> we were. Sure. Wow. Oh, sure. We were. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Twyla's coming in. Oh, hot. Hot. I rolled a two. Oh, wow. That's an extreme success. Jesus uh, fucking Christ. And you Christ. know, <laughs> this man is on the up and up. Uh, he can't take his eyes off. Celeste is the one thing Ooh. you notice. Uh, but... He he may he definitely was writing a memo <laughs> to uh, put out see if anybody within the university was willing to apply for this job. Uh, he wants none of this dealt with, and he seems like he he wants you all to lower your voices because he knows that Ms. Poppins, his assistant, can be a bit of a gossip. <gasps> you know what, Professor? I see what you're doing, and you know what? I believe you. I believe you're telling the truth. So I'm going to lower my voice because <laughs> I can see you're worried about someone hearing our gossip. Perhaps is it your secretary, Mrs. Poppins, outside? Is there anything up and you closes the door. <laughs> is there anything you wouldn't want Miss Poppins to hear? I wouldn't want anyone to hear whatever it is you have found about Charles Leader and these missing papers. Have you found any leads amongst his possessions not necessarily have you heard of his mirror i saw that it was broken <laughs> is that all is that all that's all, all that okay, i know okay then it. never mind have you found anything else about his mirror nothing nothing <laughs> at all do you know who made this piece of art No, it looks intricate. Does it mean anything to you? <laughs> the art? No. Never mind that. All right, Celeste, take over. I'm out. I'm tapped out. I don't have anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you oh did such a good job, Shaila. <laughs> is, uh, where is the dean? Uh, where is what? the dean? We're in like, the like, like, oh, in the room. Oh, he's standing right? behind the door. He got up uh, this is from around the desk. For me. <clears throat> he, stand, he had just closed the door because it was still open, and Mrs. Poppins, Miss Poppins, was right outside. I guess she's a Mrs. Poppins. A few, few women were Mrs. Um, okay, so he's right by the door. He is. Yes, I, I will get close and lean against the the door, speaking to him. King. My dear Mr. Fallon, 
Is there anything you're not telling us uh, when it comes to something not quite <laughs> normal for, uh, per se, something more magical in nature? I know, you know, I dabble a bit and I'm a little concerned by some of the things that we are finding in the office. <laughs> Look, there's nothing you're not telling us. I've had to cover up worse than this. Stu student suicides, uh, unsavory, untaught practices of other faculty. But I know there are probably many things about Charles that are not, not things that I would want the public to know about, nor are they things that I myself would like to know about. All I want is those papers back in possession of the university. And... I wish I had more to share with you, my dear. But that's all that I know. You would not put me in danger, no? Nothing I didn't believe you could handle. Is there something no, I should know all. about? He seems to not know anything Great. further than... It seems that you know more than he does at this point. That's fine. Okay. I just want to ask really quick about uh, a previous student of yours... Cecil Hunter? Cecil! <clears throat> well, I can check in the student files. And he turns around and goes to a filing cabinet. I think they were expedited from your university. Exfoliated? Ah. Uh, expelled. Right. Yes, yes. Oh, he, he's right holding a file yeah. under the H's. The Cecil Hunter, art student. Yes. It, it, it's got an address for him uh, in town. Yeah, well, any reason why he got expelled? Hmm. What's the address? I do remember a rumor. Yes, I, I believe he exposed himself in the faculty cafeteria under some hallucinogenics, is my understanding of the case. Exposed and, himself? Hmm. What's his address? <laughs> he gives you the address. The address I am given. Is this correct? <laughs> there you have it. Thank you. Now, if there is anything I can do for you ladies, please remember to keep it discreet, keep it quiet. I don't want anyone even knowing these papers are missing. Absol absolutely. Outside of the, the, those at the university know, right? Well, of course, there's the people in the department. Uh, I've tasked Mr. Roach with following up. Uh, he was the first one to discover they were missing, of course. Uh, his assistant, I'm sure, is aware by this point. But other than that, right. we're trying to keep it to as few people as possible. Were you aware of the interpersonal difficulties between Professor Leader and Professor Roach? Hmm. Well, Roach doesn't seem to be much of a fan of me. He's a rather unpleasant fellow. That's why he's been passed up for tenor so many times. Ten but you're, he's you're... been passed up. Perhaps he has some jealousy and resentment built up. Can I ask you a question? Is there anyone that actually does like Roach? Come to think of it, no, he's awfully hated around here. Shaila, do you not think that if Mr. Roach had the papers himself that he would not mention that they were missing? You know what? I don't think. That's... I don't think he has them. But I don't think he has them anymore. Something's going on here with the Roach. Nobody likes the Roach. You trust your instincts. I trust your instincts. Nobody in St. here trusts Mr. Roach. We got to look into Mr. Roach. Look at his name. Wow. Yeah. Do you have anything else you want to ask the dean or do you want to check uh, somewhere else? Why did you really hire us? <laughs> because I would like to sleep with Celeste. How did you get what? me to say that? What? That's not entirely true. I wanted a reason to call you, Celeste, and I... Was going to hire an investigator for this case. I, I just didn't know it would be a team. It's, uh, but you know, these things happen. Let's go, let's go. Let's right. Go uh, he's very embarrassed you said that. Um, yes. What the fuck? <laughs> he, he's just like, puts his head into the filing cabinet and is uh, trying to keep his cool. Please let me know if there's anything else you need. Mm hmm. Oh, we will. Like you have an effect on people, Celeste, and I do too. And I'm so sorry. That was very embarrassing for everyone. But you know what? I think we're on the right track, and we're going to solve this case. 
So let's get on it. All right. I would Next like point of action. Yeah. to speak to this uh, Lucy. Should we not head to your uh, place of work, Bernie? Yeah, I mean, uh, I can get us in easy peasy. You can get us in. I would love my first, I mean, another beer. You, We are working, Shyla. It's, it's beginning to get late afternoon, so you may want to grab a bite to eat as well. Uh, it's getting <laughs> later on in the day. Do you have bon free? Uh, I assume that one of you has a car. Celeste, you are a woman of means. Perhaps it's you. I'm a woman yes. of means. Where's the <laughs> driver? Yes. Uh, is, there no, is there a car with a driver, perhaps? Sure. Waiting. Uh, yes. Yeah, you have a private driver. I believe that. Yes. Uh, yeah, I know that Celeste is is quite wealthy um, by independent means. She is renowned. In, She's a woman of means. means. <laughs> All right, yeah. great. So, uh, you as you pull up to Hibbs Roadhouse, it's in a little desolate stretch of highway. It's just a, a small building. It seems to be go straight back it was pretty long uh and it's in a, a little city strip it's a desolate it's not that desolate uh and <laughs> it says coffee house and juice bar and a sign one of those a signs out front hold up everybody if we're pulling up to a new location i gotta get professional i'm ready yes. all right as you walk inside uh you see a teenage girl behind the bar counter of the coffee shop with a coffee menu above it and some tables and chairs, pretty empty, some older ladies uh, sipping tea. Uh, Bernie's going to walk up to the coffee counter and, and lean up on the counter and then go. The hi, lizard. Bernie. Hi, hi, toots. <laughs> That's my name, toots. What's on the menu today? Well, in back, I heard they got a new shipment in straight from France. Good stuff. From France, yeah. I've been uh, pretty interested in France recently for reasons. Who's um, French? Oh, this is, this is <laughs> Celeste uh, and Shyla. Mm -hmm. You look uh, about my age, Shyla. Don't serve Shyla, please. What? No, no, I would like my own beer. That was an aside. You did not hear it. <laughs> Bernie, you know I only I get to work the front of house until I turn 18. I know, but you can pass it back, you know? Mm -hmm. You can tell the truth. Well, I only keep it out in the back, you know? Anyway, not on the I job. I do know. I, I get killed. I only drink what you slip to me. Listen. The hours pass way quicker. Listen, that's between you and me, and if well, and now Hello? Celeste and Shyla. What's between you and me? I'm trying to have a private conversation here. I'm sorry, you're speaking loudly. I'm yes, Shyla, Shyla. Shyla. <laughs> Come here, Shyla. Let me oh, uh, fix your collar. And I'll pour Shyla aside for a moment so Bernie can speak to her colleague. And I'm straightening up, uh, fixing her tie and mm. straightening up that collar. Uh, Bernie wow. sort of, sort of. Feigns a, a look at the like a concentrated look at the menu and then says, um, I think today I'll have the uh, the lizard's wicked tail. Uh, you're gonna have to go in the back, sweetheart, for the lizard's wicked tail. No, it's like the it's like mom's the word, Becca. <laughs> Don't make me spit on my drink in my nose. <laughs> Is that a thing? It's the secret message ah! you get it from the back. It's a you classic. Gotta Sneaky yeah, thing. that's what you whisper through the, the slot hole in the door. Oh, Are you I guys assume, being secretive? I assume the front was the coffee shop, and she opened the door for us. <laughs> we really should have talked about this before. <laughs> <laughs> Can that, that, Let's just let that be true, because the thing I did was cool, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the lizard's slippery tongue rides by no! nightfall. What? <laughs> I'm seeing the other part of the coat. What do you want from me? Sorry, it made me uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable. I don't like the word slippery. 
the lizard's slippery tongue rides by nightfall. Oh. Go on back. All right. <laughs> she pulls back a curtain, and there's a door behind the counter. Uh, the old ladies look a little confused as she opens the door for you. Hello? As you go into the bar <laughs> in the back. Who are these old women? <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> you want to lay out? Yes, please. <laughs> the front of the building. It's a cafe. It's a we, front. Yeah. It's a cafe. Yeah. There's a teenager behind the bar yeah. and there's two old ladies sipping tea that think it's an actual cafe. Oh, I thought with the way you described it, I thought we lifted back the curtain and the old ladies were behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who are they? What do they want? <laughs> okay, I understand now. Okay, do you want to go in the bar? <laughs> yes! Uh, let me in! Let me in! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> what are these old ladies want? It's around 3.30 in the afternoon, so there's not many people in there, but there mm. is uh, uh, a man behind the bar, and there are two men in trench coats and fedoras. And as soon as the three of you walk through the door, their heads jerk up and they look straight at you, eagle-eyed, they're smoking a cigarette. Are they cops? Do you mind if I take this one? <laughs> sure. <laughs> fellow investigator, I mean, fellow investigator, so good to see you. What are you here working on today? He grabs you by the collar, the older ah. one. There's a young guy and an old guy. Yeah. What do you know about Charles Leader and its whereabouts? What do you know about Charles Leader and his whereabouts? No, I asked you, what do you know about Charles you Leader and his whereabouts? You asked first, but I asked second. You have to answer first. Excuse me. All unhand, right. unhand, <laughs> Miss Mister. Please, gentlemen, Thank how you. dare you behave you like this? Yes, you got this. I love you. Thank you. Does Bernie recognize them? Like, are they part of, like, the mob that runs the speakeasy or anything? Uh, <laughs> they don't look like they're from around here, but they've got a definite Do they look like they're mafia. from an Atlantic City? <laughs> Do you want to roll for uh, a no skill? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, that's your intelligence. For it? <laughs> and so asked, what do you say to them? Uh, he, he let go the older gentlemen. They're, they're about the same height and build, big guys, uh, and hard to see much of their faces except for angular jaws and tight lips. And he says... Excuse me, miss. Uh, is there a reason when you're meddling in my business? Actually, uh, it's my business because this is my bar, and I'm not sure you want to be stepping in on the family that runs this joint. So why don't you explain yourself before I call that family and get them all down here for a little reunion? All right, all right, all right. Don't get your knickers up your wee wah. Uh, you my boss knows your, your boss, family. okay? So how about we just leave it at that? How about you What's tell the me relation? What you know? Excuse me? What's the relation? Uh, I believe they're business associates. And you were asked to come here? Uh, we were asked to come find Mr. Charles' leader to settle up his debts. Have you heard anything about this, gentlemen? We've heard about his debts. It's not a secret in this town. Excellent. If you know about his debts, then you must know him. So how about I give you five seconds to pony up exactly where this so-called dead man has been hiding, or else maybe you're going to have to settle his debts. I would like to see the legal contract that binds us to settle a dead man's debt. Young sir, oh, I'll have know, you I know that you. only relatives will have access to paying off debts that people have owed. And we are here. You are in the premises of young Bernie here. She is the owner. She is in authority here. And I am her friend. So therefore, you will answer our questions, sir. You will not ask our questions, sir. You, you will answer us. 
<laughs> Can you roll for intimidate? I really should have put points in intimidation. We're gonna <laughs> die. I know. <laughs> I have a gun and it only has six bullets, so. <laughs> I don't know what is going on with this character, but she just rolled a one. So <laughs> That's a I don't know what you. What the fuck? I don't know what's going on with this oh character. Oh my God. <laughs> oh that, my God, Kate. That, madame, is an ex uh, a, a crit success. So, uh, yeah, they're intimidated. They both sit down at uh, their bar stools at their bar table, a little round bar table, and they uh, both t tilt their fedoras down. The younger one doesn't talk much. Uh, and just, well, we're very sorry. We're very sorry. You must not know anything. Uh, pardon us. Yeah, we will pardon you. For the fact that I forgot my hat today and you will have yours. Perhaps you give me one of your hats and then you tell us everything you know. The older guy looks to the younger guy and he gives him the slightest of nods. The young guy looks back at him, sort of widens his eyes. And the older guy widens his eyes. And then the young guy tilts his head down, takes off his fedora and hands it over to Shyla. Well, okay. You know, I feel like this has been missing my entire life, and I appreciate it. Now tell us the information that's missing from our case. Oh. Hey, hey, Shyla, maybe don't mention anything related to authority figures in a speakeasy. You got a case? You know what? We have our own authority, and I am here with you, and you're the boss, and I'm your friend, and right. therefore I have a hat. And you don't no, want to get of. me fired, right? So don't nope, act like you're, you're a cop. Get, no, I'm not a cop. I'm just very scary. <laughs> the bartender um, behind the bar has just been pretending to wash the same <laughs> spot with a rag over That's and over. That's all bartenders do. I did it for five years. That's all I ever did. <laughs> you also see his hand on the shotgun under the bar. Uh, and he's not making eye contact with anyone, but you know exactly what that means because you know that right. the boss keeps a shotgun there. Right. Uh, uh, the see. older guy seems to be the only one that ever talks. What do you know about a case? How about you let us in on this case of yours? And maybe we could be of service. Oh, I think uh, our friend here must have misspoken. No, 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 no. We're just wondering uh, what the case is here with this uh, Mr. Leader that you keep bringing up. Uh, and we've heard his name a few times, but as far as we know, uh, I mean, he was just recently killed, no, uh, at the university. And I would also pull out a cigarette of my own and ask, do you have a light? He nods to the younger guy, Oaks, and Oaks uh, flips open a, a Zippo type lighter and lights your cigarette. I'll tell you what we know, but we don't know much. Our boss sent us here, as you know, ma'am. Uh, I, I know you by reputation, Bernie. You work at this bar, don't you? That's right. Well, all we know is that we were sent here to find this man that owes. He owes a sum of $11,000, if you can believe that. $11,000! Did he put anything else up other than the money? Well, he didn't offer anything to us. All, all I know is in August, this man, he made some bargains that he couldn't fulfill. You know what I mean? And when you make a deal with my boss, you better pay up. Anyway, we're just here to collect to maybe break a few legs to do it. That's all I was sent to do. And that's your job. No one faults you for that. But what Wait, makes you think... Permitted? Shyla? Nothing. I was just going to comment on the fact that they're allowed to break legs on their job. I would like to break Listen. legs. Listen. I'm not... Okay. I'll yeah. show you... Nope. He's intimidated by you. He almost threatens to break your <laughs> legs, but then he realizes you scared him for some reason. Maybe it's just your wild it's hair unpredictable. Energy. What makes you think that he's alive? Someone who owes 11 grand in debt doesn't go dead unless me and my boss want him dead. You know what I mean? You know, strange coincidences, you know? They happen. Could be. 
But this is just what we've been told. Treat it as if he's not dead until I get evidence. If I see a body, maybe I'll believe he's dead. Until mm. then, Mr. Miyagi's going to need some... Mr. Some Miyagi? We're not going to focus on this thing this year. <laughs> <laughs> Let me and tell you, you play in that secret, name. Bernie and Celeste, <laughs> that we have a chance to go The bartender continues wiping the bar and says, well, Keep saw. wiping that bar. <laughs> Why don't you get that dark spot in the corner? Bernie and Celeste, we have a chance to go see if this body is actually there. Should we go yes. see if that body is actually there? Yes, I, I think What that if it's not? <gasps> Did you say you know about this body? Listen. No, I didn't say anything. If we do, I want to see a body. You said you know where the body is. There is a bug outside that I saw that landed on your light and died on the floor. You can look at that body. It's not for you. Celeste, Bernie, let's go look at the body. uh, Gentlemen, thank you for being so kind uh, and for giving our uh, forwardness. If we hear anything, you know, we will let you know. Okay, well, uh, let's see. Uh, I got a card I can give you. Uh, and one just passes you just and there's nothing written on it except a phone number so five five this person owns a telephone they're a big deal i don't know we're staying at the west arms inn well give us a call thank you gentlemen uh shaughnessy tips his hat and then oaks goes to tip his hat and realizes Oh, thank you so no, much. I very sad. <laughs> your housing accommodation for my cranium, good sir. You know Goodbye. what they say. You know what they say, kid. There's always another fedora. Uh, you know what, Kate? What? In, out of game. I want you to check the box next to intimidate. Intimidate. <laughs> I yeah. am very scary. And What's someone that? else rolled extremely well. Uh, do you remember what else you rolled extremely well earlier? You can also check that box. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. a checked box means that uh, before our next session, technically at the end of a scenario, but I'm going to say before our next session, you're going to actually get to improve that skill. We'll deal with that uh, later on. Yay. <laughs> Love, All it. Right. Love it. Are you leaving the bar right now? So uh, we got to talk to Lucy. Oh, yes, need to find out. So as we move away from the man who was just talking, uh, Shiva takes Bernie and Celeste's arm and says, look, I know we're going to go talk to Lucy and I'm so excited to meet her. But let me just say, we need to go see if that body is still there or not. That's number one priority. Okay, number, 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 wait, number one priority, talk to Lucy. Number two, talk to body. Number three, find papers. We got this. We can do this. Okay. Are you ready? Uh, Bernie, you know that the bartender behind the counter, he's been here for a long time. His name is Joe. Hey, Joe. Bernie. How's it going? Not great. I wasn't supposed to work this shift. Lucy didn't show up. What do you mean she didn't show up? mean she called in she said she can't come in tonight she called though what she like said mean she's alive i bet these fellas had something to do with it if you ask me she well she say where she was gonna be i assume at her apartment all right you know where that is yeah i know what that is i'll give it to tell you tell us don't worry doll can i get you a drink while you're here you know what yeah. honestly a shot of whiskey would really help me out right now. I got a tall <clears> one <throat> for you and your friends. He's a very no, nice man. He pours three glasses. More alcohol. Not the little one. How old are you? No, I'm twenty. I'm twenty. I'm in my twenties. She's old enough. He pours a, a double shot of whiskey uh, in three different Ooh. shot glasses and uh, passes you a slip of paper with an address that's um, just a few blocks away. All right. How are you feeling, Skyla? (laughs) (laughs) That was delicious that I've had many times before. All right. Uh, Thanks for the the drinks, Joe. Uh, 
you know, keep an eye on those guys that were in here because they are um, they're on a mission. And I'm not sure they care who gets in the way. As they're you turn around, you guys. see that the guys have left the bar. They could come back. Hmm. Just we'll be on do. The lookout. I, I, I appreciate. I've seen appreciate his pipe. You. you know, you be on yeah. the ready to have our back, though. He taps under the bar where you know the shotgun is and winks at you. Right back. All right. See you later, Joe. Finger On guns. the slip of paper, you see her last name is Lucy Stone. Emma's sister. <laughs> <laughs> Did he so give you the address? Yes. Hmm? Oh, nice. Okay. Do we should we head straight there? Make sure she's okay. He thinks I think, those you men... know what? After my very first whiskey, I think we should go wherever you think we should go because so far. I'm playing private investigator and you're doing the best job. So we should do what you. Oh, oh. No. okay. <laughs> let's take uh, Shyla here. Let's uh, bring her into the car. And you know we've got a way. we've got a wagon for when this kind of thing happens. Oh, good. Yes, we'll, we'll just put uh, her in the wagon. Wagon her wagon to. The vehicle. Absolutely. There's a wagon in the parking uh, area out front. It's just on the street. There's parking spaces along <laughs> it. And there's a wagon just sitting there. Everyone's seen five wagons, right? Five <laughs> wagons. Can everybody okay. roll for spot hidden? Yep. Shiloh, you're going to have to roll two tens die and take the worst one. Okay. Ooh, I got a nice called a penalty die, which Please. is a, a, a great success. Awesome. I still succeeded. Wow. <laughs> what is wrong with you, Kate? I did so many things. <laughs> Bernie uh, and Shyla, at the same time, you notice across the street in a parked Ford Model T, the very square shaped ones that look like a old buggy, uh, you see the guys, Oaks, and I'm not sure if the other one told you his name. You said Shaughnessy, but I Shaughnessy. think it was above game. Oops. Oops. Oaks and Shaughnessy are sitting in a Ford Model T and they're just staring at you both. Oh, you three. Hmm. Uh, I, don't, I don't like the, that. The tension and bumbles over drunkenly to the man oh. and goes, Do you oh, guys no, have like one of those no, like no, no. sticky death cigarettes with the fryer? I would like one, please. Can I have one a cigarette? Yes. You're uh, on the sidewalk across the street from them, and, and they I'm each uh, they pull up newspapers and hold them in front of their faces. <laughs> I can <laughs> see you, sir. Them. Celeste, I think maybe we should take this opportunity while they're distracted to just walk a couple blocks over to Lucy's house. <laughs> yes, yeah, awesome. I agree. I will uh, stop and tell George, the driver, that we will be uh, at this address and just to meet us over there, and we will just walk. Actually... Yes, yes. Do you, <laughs> do you do you hide or do uh, you do this in, in plain view of Oaks and Shaughnessy? What if well, we, that's what I was wondering. I was wondering if we should if uh, we, can we act should like put, we get in the car, right? Cool. And then have the car. We sort of go around a corner and then the car drives away since we're at an angle to we oui. sort of be hidden by the car. So let's like let's slam the car doors while yes. we've gotten in. Awesome. Um, okay, so you, you slam the car doors and then maybe you duck behind a car nearby as George pulls out and takes off. Uh, let's see. Who who's who came up with this plan? I need someone to roll for luck. So Ooh, let me. Like, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I just I have mean... a really high luck score. <laughs> Bernie, give me a luck roll. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Shyla. And then Shyla, you're gonna have to roll for luck that you, you got, don't mess this up. You got Shyla up. drunk, and now she's like just distracting Actually, them. So you know what? You Can I just get it. a stealth roll from each of you? A stealth oh, roll no. from all of us. Uh, so not luck. Uh, let's 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 make this. Uh... <laughs> Dang it! I rolled well, Becca. Okay, okay, okay. We can keep it luck. Yeah. I rolled a twenty-five. Out of 84. Nice. All right. That's uh, at least a hard success. What about Shyla? I rolled a 50 out of 55. Oh, amazing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I imagine Shyla starts to 
fall out of the way and and Bernie and Celeste just drag her back right in place <laughs> as George drives around the corner and the Model T just takes off after it, uh, almost screeching behind. They're not very subtle. And you're free to walk. You can walk over to the address you found. It's pretty easy to find. It's a building with uh, three stories. And she's on the second story, uh, apartment number 202. Uh, what? Shall we? Is this is the does anything seem suspicious about like the outside of the door? Like is it cracked open or anything like that? Uh you do notice that the it looks like somebody's kicked in the door quite recently. And a woman comes to it, a blonde woman. She looks just about uh barely 30. <sighs> yes. What can I what can I do for you? Do I recognize this as Lucy? Bernie? Mm. Hey, Lucy, you okay? Come in here, come in here. All right. Quick, shut the door, and she looks down the hallway both ways. She's wearing just a sort of bathrobe. Uh, glamorous, still. Are we interrupting something? No, not at all. And she, after she looks both ways, she closes the door and goes and sits on the couch. There's just, it, the place is a mess, and there's an ashtray on a box right in front of her, just full of cigarettes and, and there's a lit one that she picks up and just starts smoking from. You seem stressed, Luz. What's going on? Yeah, well, my boyfriend died, so that was kind of shitty. Right. And, Sorry uh, about that. Yeah. Uh, and well, just which, some fellas came by. What kind Charles. of fellas? Charles Winston's in trouble. They haven't bothered you? I figured they would have been at the bar. That's why I didn't go in tonight. Like an older guy, really big, broad shoulders, kind of a younger guy, That's dumb nice. hat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're looking for him. Do you see this? Mm. She shows you she's got a big bruise on her arm. Anyway, Jeez, I'm not leaving the house today. I'm thinking about maybe I ought to leave town. Yeah, where would you go? If I told you I wouldn't be very good at leaving towns, now would I? Well, you know I got a I got a tight lip, you know. Sure. I don't know yet. Where did where did you and Charles used to go? Well, Atlantic City, that was the trouble. Well, we went in June. Oh, he's such a nice guy. Did I ever tell you about him? Uh, we don't know each other that well, I know. Uh, I know I just got here, really. I don't talk much to people at work. Right. I mean, that's okay. It's a, it's a bit of a, a fickle business we work in. So sometimes building up relationships can be a bit uh, scarce. That's right. <laughs> Don't I know it? <laughs> Man, I worked, I worked as a waitress and maybe a cigarette girl and a model on every city this side of Boston. So, yeah. Ooh. You say they, uh, they're they suggesting that your boyfriend is not dead. Uh, what, how did you, how do you feel about this? Of course he's dead. He wouldn't leave town without me. Did you uh, have a chance to uh, see, uh, see him? Uh, well, no, I haven't seen the body. In fact, I keep calling the university and asking. I keep telling them that I want to see the body because I would like to pay my last respects. And they tell oh. me, no, you can't. And I say, if it's just a heart attack, it can't be so bad. What? what can't? And they, they didn't even... Well, his mother came to town and, and they said they couldn't have the body at the funeral because it's part of an ongoing investigation. Huh. What else did they tell you? <laughs> Who's they? The they you speak of. Well, He's talking about the, the two dudes in the coat. Oh, right. They told me they were going to break some bones if I didn't t give them $11,000 or tell them where Charles is. And I don't have either of those things. Outrageous. Did you ever hear of any black market deals that Charles was doing on the side? This will help you, so telling us will help you. Who are you again? You're going to have to roll <laughs> for charm. <laughs> I'm your friend, the creepiest thing you could say. Who's your friend, Bunny? Are you an animated doll? What is this? 
I was, I'm trying to be more respectful of personal space. And yeah, something Ooh, we're working I on. Oh, I What is Second. wrong with you? I don't know. Something's seriously wrong with Sida. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. I'm sorry. I'm being rude. It's just a lot going on. What did you want to know? What was what when you last saw? Um, no, I want to hear from the sweet, sweet child. You sweet child. You want to hear from the come baby? Here, come here. She just gives you a big hug. I just, I was rude to you and I didn't mean nothing by it. <laughs> she rolled it too, so. This is the no, only I'm time so Shiloh's been quiet. Shiloh! <laughs> what did you ask her? I'm like, letting you do your thing, Bernie. No, it's you. She wants to talk to you. So tell us. <laughs> what is your deepest secret in relation to this case? <laughs> uh, okay, I Tell guess my deepest secret, uh, if you're asking, is uh, I hate this fucking town. I don't want to be <gasps> here after my boyfriend's gone and there's men trying to break my knees, uh, twist my arms. I'm going to take whatever money was left that Charles told me where it is, and I'm going to skip town. That's what I'm going to do. <gasps> Please don't tell Lucas and Shaughnessy. Um, okay. <laughs> we won't. Can I tell you something else? Always mm -hmm. tell us everything. My sweetie was acting real strange. He was acting like somebody was always around. Like somebody was right behind him sometimes. And he'd hear things in the night. He'd, he'd have terrible nightmares. And I, I'd try to wake him up and I'd try to help. And he just said, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. Just go back to sleep. And that wasn't like him. Let me ask you a fantastic question. Did it sound like he was hearing voices that weren't really there? Yeah. <gasps> he has some screaming so. voices, Celeste and Bernie. He has them too. Show her the mirror. I, <laughs> I uh, pull out the piece <laughs> of broken <laughs> mirror. If you had any mirrors break in your uh, place while Charles was about, did you no hear anything? Like that. Why? Where, where'd you get that? Doesn't yeah. matter. Do you hear anything? She does. It was. It was from his office. Can I have everybody roll for a listen? Oh dang it! That's <laughs> <laughs> a fail. A very big fail. Um. Uh, Ooh, mine's a success. Mine is just below a fail. <laughs> what does that so mean? Last so it's a success, right? It's a success. It means I rolled my favorite number, but it doesn't matter. 69? Sure. Oh. 42. <laughs> what? Was it 42? Yes, it was. Uh, I, I, got, I got a beard today that's called 42. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Shyla and Bernie, you hear the radio. Sounds like it's coming from the bedroom. Spring on suddenly and static at maximum volume comes buzzing from the other room. And outside the window, you all see a red light fill the window panes in this living room. Duh. <sighs> What's happening? What's happening? Do you all are you all seeing this? Yes. I, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Yes, I'm seeing it too. Yes, it's one hundred percent. It's red. And it's scary. This happened to us earlier in the office, and uh, nothing hurt us. It's 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 just it's just a bit of a scare. So just just Gee. hold it together. We're okay. The light it'll pass. Flicker, and then the bulb above you bursts <gasps> as if it's been overloaded with electricity. And then suddenly the radio in the other room stops and the glowing red light from outside the window is gone. So. What is happening? What is happening? What is going on? Please. Uh, I just want to know what happened to Charles. 
did 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 Charles have any of his possessions here that he that he kept at your place? Nothing. We would always go to his cottage because this place is a dump. <laughs> well, okay. Don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> well, look around you. It's not like I have much on the salary they give us at Hibs. Uh, is there anything on her that seems like a, 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 I don't know, a mark, a talisman, anything uh, that seems like it would be a magical source? Roll for a cult. Whoa! 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 No! No! Wait, can I push it? You can push it, or if, if it's close, you can it's use up the ten. Oh. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, it's you not. You can push the roll. Describe to me how push you reach it. deeper push into you your can. own mind. Uh, it's within. I think back to how sometimes uh, unusual objects that are given to you by others have so much more meaning than you realize. I think back to that fan that, that gave me this necklace and just moments after he gave it to me, he dropped dead. <laughs> and so I always felt that there was some attachment to it. So I'm trying to look for anything that has that uh, feeling to it, you know? Yeah, give me, give me another roll. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, regular success? Uh, I will use two points to make it a hard success. Yes! You can't spend luck on no, a push drop. Just kidding, but it's a success. You see a shadow behind her, but it, it's not, it's more of an aura, but not like the spiritual auras that you know from fortune tellers uh, that can read the colors of your mood. It's, it's just darkness. You see uh, just a cloud surrounding her. Is it cold in here? Anyone else? Oh, my dear. Uh, I'm a bit worried about you. Um, I feel like this will follow you no matter where you go. Celeste, Do you, you know from your knowledge of the occult that this is the mark of impending death. <gasps> Oops, bitch. Uh, ma chérie. Uh, do you know anyone that can uh, help uh, cleanse you of such darkness? Uh, you've got something clinging to you. I can see it. It's probably Charles's ghost or something. I don't know. I, I just, I don't feel, how can I go I, on without him, you know? Uh, do, him you him. do I know anyone in town that I could give um, uh, information for? Like maybe someone, in, uh, a magic practitioner of sorts? Sure. Roll for credit rating. <laughs> Oh my god, Kate. It's credit rate. Ah, there he is. Oh, I rolled a one. <laughs> Shut the front door! What do you mean? Is that normal? Two ones in a session? No. That is not normal. That is not normal. Oh my glob. You know someone in town, in Arkham. You were told uh, from, of course, you had to get a referral before leaving Paris uh, from your fortune teller of who in this part of the world was reputable. And you know a, a, a Madame Estelle that uh, you you were referred to and, and you can give her uh, that information. You can... Um, okay. You are actually yes. given a card. Yes, I, I take the card. I take uh, um, Lucy's hands. I say, my dear, you have to. You have to go see Madame Estelle right away. And she will help rid you of this darkness because otherwise you will not be safe. Please, I implore you. I don't understand. What is it you see? There is this dark shadow clinging to you, my child. I... It's going to follow you. I do not want what happened to Sham to happen to you, my dear. No. You must go to her. All right. You know, I knew it the moment, the moment that I touched those papers. Wait. What papers? 
I don't know what they were, something Charles was working on. We were at the cottage and he was saying, you know, this is going to be his biggest deal yet. He told me he was getting all kinds of calls back and forth from different investors that, that so many people wanted it. And this was his big score. He had such high hopes for a few weeks there. Where are these papers now? I assume they're at the university or something. I don't know. It was his work. He kind of had a odd job on the side. Well, I don't mean to speak ill of the dead or anything. Do you already know about this? It, it seems like y'all know a lot more than I do. You know, no. we know everything already. So why don't you just tell us? I thought you were just coming over here to comfort me. Why do you want to know so much about Charles? I'll make you some hot chocolate if you tell us what you know. We are just curious because you say that you touch these papers and they have caused this and I, I am concerned in the in the occult and what could cause such darkness to surround you. So it's my interest to find uh, uh, what would be the cause of this and help what you can. of it. I guess I could take you to the cottage, but well, I don't, I don't know if there's anything like that there. He was taking the satchel with him everywhere he went. Home and work in the cottage. Hmm. Well, Do you have this, ba- this satchel in your possession? No, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know where it is. But it could be at his cottage, so why don't we go find out? Sure. I yes, I, 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 I took the night off work. Well, Lucia, I, I would rather you go to Madame Estelle's and I nice. whisper... Whisper to Shyla real quickly. Remember, we already have a key to the cottage. You do have... The the Dean gave you the address as well. You know what? I would just love to hear what you have to say, and that's it. I don't need anything else from you. I I just think... Yes, no. Go tonight. Tonight to Madame Estelle. It's it's, it's, uh, urgent. Please. What she said. Okay. Okay. I'll do that. Well, thank you for this. If there's anything else I can do to be of use. You know, I told Oaks and Shaughnessy that I'd tell them if anybody came here, but, well, I won't tell them that you were here. Pinky promise. She pinky promises. I go. She was going to tell, but you charmed her so much. Thank you, you know, we're friends, and friends stick together. Thank you, uh, Lucy, and uh, good luck. As you exit the apartment building, you notice people just running in the streets. Uh, There seems to be a sudden windstorm that's picked up and you feel just sand brush against all of your faces and dirt flies up. Uh, People are just running and women are screaming, their dresses are going everywhere and uh, they're holding onto their pearls. It's pandemonium. What, What is happening? My allergies. <laughs> uh, Two cars I... in the street just crash into each other. Uh, they weren't going too fast, so it doesn't seem like anybody's hurt terribly, I... but they get out of the car and start screaming at each other until they notice the wind as well. I, uh, have, a, I have a feeling maybe George isn't going to be able to make it here. Yes, is he anywhere nearby? Uh, he comes screeching around the corner, and he pulls up right in front. <laughs> Uh, George quick, doesn't talk much. He just tips his driver's hat to you. Let us get in the vehicle quick out of this wind. You see my eyes. Ah! Is there anything in the sky? If you look up, you can see in the hilltop to the west a beacon of red light. It looks far outside of town. Is that the same color as the eyes we saw in the mirror? Same color of red. It's, it's connected. It's, it's too bright. I don't like it. This is not a good sign. No. no. I think I have some other potentially bad news. What's that? I um I touched those papers. Wait, wait, what? The ones we found in the wall. I I touched them. And how do you oh. feel? I feel fine, but if if the pattern is to be believed, but I'm not sure I'm long for this world either. 
I cannot you accept know? that, Bernie. You're an exceptional human being, and you deserve to live on this planet. Celeste, we have to help her. Well, I'm sure that she meant you don't think it was the witch trial papers. What else she, would she have meant? Well, he was working okay. on him at home. He took yes. him everywhere. But the papers you that you touched were session. forgeries, right? One of them was. I think the other was the original. She'll pull him out of her pocket. Wait, uh, but... He had to copy from something. And as you look at them, you see uh, it says Federalist Papers number 35. It's not the witch trials document. <laughs> oh. Wait, it's what? another colonial era document. Oh. Did we just assume no one asked? <laughs> <laughs> they were. No, I, I thought they were forgeries. Yeah. There's definitely a partial forgery, but it's not of the of it's the not Arkham. I feel like everything <laughs> cool I try to do ends up being so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Bernie? I'm gonna just I shut up. Just I'm gonna just shut up. up. There's many things How did have we happened. Not ask? How did we not ask when we you pulled know, the papers? Are we just assumed? Less. And this is what happened. We just assumed they were Arkham. I'm the private investigator. I would have asked more questions, but you said I was being too loud and my voice was annoying. So, you know, I just tried no to dial it back. No one said that. Like, <laughs> you know, and I love you, but you know, this is what happened. You can tell that it is very much illegal to do what he is doing with those historical documents. Look, I is, we need to get answers and... I think it's time that we look at the body, no? We've got to. I would love to see this fetus shrimp if he actually exists because we've met three people so far yes. who have said that he doesn't look like a fetus shrimp, that he might still be alive. So I want to go see for real and poke him with my own finger and confirm that he's dead. George is very intuitive and was already heading back to the university. Just then you pull up right in front. You, you know what? Let me tip you five dollars right now, sir. I don't have a lot of money, but you're an excellent but writer, you, and you know what's up. Oh. So, okay. he won't take it, and he doesn't look at you. He just tips his hat down. That's that's weird and intimidating, and I will respect that and take my money back. Okay, thank you, sir. I will buy my first. I mean, my another beer with this. <sighs> okay. As, uh, do you want to head into the medical building? I'm Please. going straight to that body. Uh, and and Shyla, maybe no touching the dead body. I'm gonna touch it. Hey. As you I'm walk into it. the medical department, you see right near the entrance uh, a plaque for Do Dr. John Wheatcroft's office. Ah, yes. He's the he's the coroner or works in the medical building. Is that what it is? He's the one he who is the one who did the autopsy. He's a uh, professor yeah. in the medical school. That's Mr. Okay. Wheatman. Uh, then shall we knock? Nope. The door's already open. Open the door. Do I'm going to help you. Hello, Dr. Sir, Mr. Professor. We are looking for the corpse of the dean of the university that we what? are investigating. No, no, we would like no. to see it immediately. Uh, that is my no. no, 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 no. Dean Fallon? No, the dean is fine. The dean is fine. <laughs> the dean has sent us to look at uh, Mr. Leader's body. Is what? That's the one. That's the one. You know, I was confused. That's why I have my compatibles here. They help me clear it up. Why don't you just show it to it so we can get out of your face? I was told that an investigator would come here. Uh, follow yeah. me. He starts you taking you in the hallway and he opens up a door that leads to a large, wide set of stairs. Uh, and as you start walking down them, it gets colder and colder. My name is Dr. John Wheatcroft and I have been working here for over 45 years in this university. Yeah. I must warn the three of you, this is not for the faint of heart to look upon a body such as this. And now I did uh, tell the reporters that this was a heart attack, but, uh, well, it, it's not exactly like anything I've ever seen. And he opens the door to a room made of almost all metal. It's cold and sterile in here. And you see a wall full of pull drawers. It's definitely a coroner's 
uh, room and there, uh, it looks like a medical school. It seems like there's lots of desks in here. And then there's also tables for what you can assume is where the bodies are placed for education. Look here, Mr. Sure. Clearly I am not of my right of mind and I'm clearly uneducated in this disposition because I have to see the Dean's body and we're looking to see it from other guys' bodies. So why don't you show us which of these many open drawers, by the way, you should close your drawers after you're done dealing with them. Why don't you show us which of these many drawers contains the person that we need to investigate and you be a professional in this professional situation. Look at my tie. I'm a professional too. Shyla, why are you mad at this man? I am (laughs) mad at him because he's wasting our time. Oh, sure. he's wasting your time. Okay. He's wasting Shida. He's wasting, you know what? He's burning Shida's time and Bernie's time and Celeste's time. Why don't you show us the body we're here to inspect? That's fair. That's really fair. <laughs> oh, like, look, oh, look at his channel. Oh. <laughs> well, it's the test over here, and he sort of shuffles towards one door. You, m- madam, he points to Bernie. Could you open that for me? And I, have, I, I don't want to pull out my back. How do you work down here, and you can't do the work? Well, he op- he turns, the- <laughs> he gives you a side eye, and then he opens the drawer himself. <laughs> So, of course. Good job for doing your job. He pulls out the morgue drawer, and there is a body, a a tall man, average build, uh, with a sheet over him. May I just say, before we look again, this is not a sight that you'll soon forget. Show me the fetus shrimp. I need to see. Why are you my calling own eyes. it that, Shiloh? And as I, it doesn't matter. That, it doesn't matter, Bernie. I know what I need to see. Show it to me. He pulls back the sheet, and you see a horrific sight of a man frozen in terror. His eyes are bulging out of their sockets, but they look as if they they have no more pupils. They are engulf, uh, in engorged, wider than an eye ball should be and uh <laughs> definitely his body huh definitely his body definitely 100%. a body and definitely a dead. body a body it's hard to recognize from the picture you saw in his office but there's nothing that tells you it's not this man i'm gonna need each of you to roll for sanity when you see <laughs> oh, no. eyes, whitish gray with no pupils a success. Ooh, I failed. Yep. I succeeded. What the hell, Kate? Shyla's you're gonna have insane. to, you're gonna have to remember, fail eventually. This way. I know she should have failed on a lot of initial rolls. <laughs> Instead, <laughs> Chris. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Sponsor. Uh Bernie, please take two sanity loss. <laughs> You scream loudly as everyone jerks back, uh, or rather, Dr. Wheatcroft jerks back when, uh, when at your reaction. <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't have shown this to you. And oh, no. to the chin it's back. okay, it's okay. It's clawed hands beneath it. That's not right. It's not right. It's okay. That's not right. Look at I'm me. I'm so Look sorry to upset you. Not only was it a massive and sudden heart failure, but simultaneous organ failure. Spasms throughout his entire body. An almost instantaneous death. And look what's more. He pulls back the sheet again. It seems that there was thermal damage to his optic tissue, as if they <gasps> boiled the vitreous matter. What kind yes. of thermal damage? Was it radiation or other kind of heat? Radiation. I I wouldn't know how to test for that. Uh, it just seems that it was boiled inside of the eye. Shocking. Uh, I, I I put an arm around Bernie and sort of turn her away for a bit. It's, it's okay. This is upsetting. I understand. It'll be all right. I didn't sign up for this. I, I did not sign up for this. It's Red okay, lights Bernie. in the sky and eyes bulging out of heads. 
No, and that is where we will end it no, for no, the you evening. Dare. <laughs> so no, you sorry, dare. but we have come to the end of tonight's show. Uh, but you know what? I will leave you with just one image of exactly what you look like. No, 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 he looks like he's terrified, but also like he's seeing his favorite meal. That's a face I get. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much for coming along on this adventure with me. We will be back for Thank part you, two Edna. in exactly two weeks. But before Thank we go, um, I'd love to hear from each of you, the players, not the characters, <laughs> uh, but where people can find you and what else you're up to. And you know what? I'm just doing this little banner right here on my play. Joe, Josephine, tell us, not only you have a movie coming out tomorrow that people can find. Yes, yes. The Mortuary Collection is coming out tomorrow on Shudder. Uh, it's a horror anthology film. It's a lot of fun. You should check it out. Uh, I also have another uh, sci-fi RPG show that is going to be on its third episode this Friday, 7 p.m. at twitch.tv slash jcvim, which is my channel. I also stream there Monday through Friday. Uh, lots of games and tea. Um, but yeah, if you want other horror, spooky uh, shenanigans, Friday Eclipse will be the one to check out. It's a good one. Excellent. What about you, Havana? Uh, hi, I'm Vanna. You can catch me streaming uh, four to five days a week over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Vanna. That's V-A-N-A. -A. Uh, and other than that, we're on a hiatus over at Saving Throw Show for our Pirates of Salt Bay show just wrapped. So now we're going to be doing interstitials starting uh, next week, twitch.tv slash Saving Throw Show, where we're, uh, each of us players are going to take turns uh, taking over the GM seat and showcasing some uh, indie RPGs that we've been really excited to try and play with the same cast as the uh, as the Salt Bay. So if you were into that, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and yeah, I think that's all I got right now. I'm still kind of settling back into my old ways out here in Tennessee. So. In Tennessee. Tennessee. Kate, <laughs> Kate what you up to? Also settling oh. into a new town. Yeah, we just moved, but I'm looking to start a petition to get uh, this episode going for five more seasons. Let's <laughs> <make it> <laughs> we have to keep coming back. So, uh, yeah, uh, I would love to see more of this uh, story. I want to solve this case. So if everyone in chat who's watching right now and looking you directly in the eyes, if you could start a petition, it would be a regular thing. I think everyone's on board with that. <laughs> I absolutely agree with that assessment and I think Kat is with you tonight was absolutely bonkers <laughs> y'all had me entertained all evening thank you so much um, let me shout out some stuff we're doing on Good Time Society we have a brand new role playing game coming out on Tuesday and we're going to announce it on our channel but um, I like to tell secrets for the first time on my streams. Let me tell you, <laughs> we're playing a game called Asunder that will be GM'd by Amy Vorpal. Um, I'm going to be a player in that, and we'll announce some super awesome players coming up as well. Also, every Tuesday, we got a podcast about Star Trek, The Next Generation. Uh, I stream on Mon Tuesdays and Fridays, and... Um, that's all I got at the moment. Uh, oh, Saturdays we play a uh, board game over on twitch.tv slash Good Time Society, and we're playing Sagrada this weekend. Uh, and that's a place where I'd love to have all three of you back as well. But most importantly, come back in two weeks, same time, same place, because we got an adventure to get to the bottom of with Celeste, Shyla, and Bernie. Thank yes. you. <laughs> So much, ladies. Thank this you. Was Thank such you. Such a blast. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> I always have a great time with you. In and out of games, ladies. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.